Welcome, everybody, to episode 74 of the ADV Podcasts. We've got a good one for you today. <laughs> yeah. What? I just, somebody said sea milk walks like a girl down hills, and it's absolutely true. I'm not very good at walking down hills. <laughs> okay. Up is fine. <laughs> okay. I just excellent. can't walk down. Yeah, so we have a lot to talk about today, uh, and uh, it's going to be quite a fascinating show, I think. So we're we going to saunter right into this one. We sure are. All right, guys, we're going to start out with uh, What's New, where we talk about what's new in China, anything to do with China. We're going to start with something a little interesting. Um, we're going to go back to Xinjiang for a second here. Can we okay. set up Xinjiang? All these noobs out there that don't even know what it is. Sure, well, go There's ahead. Some. For all you smarty pants out there that know what Xinjiang is, you'll know that it's a... Uh, the westernmost province of China, the biggest province in China, mm -hmm. and it is also the home to the Uyghur Muslim minority. That so are being put into concentration camps. You've heard of you've this. You've heard of them. Anyway, mm -hmm. they're different than Chinese people. They look different, have different language, different culture, different religion, blah, blah, blah. The point is, is that what they've been doing because of allegations of genocide is hiring a bunch of foreigners yeah. to go to Xinjiang. And then to do puff pieces in the exact same tourist spots over and over again to say, look, there's no genocide because I'm standing here in a city square. Yes. Where there's pigeons flying around, doves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And look, the, there's a kid right there playing with bubbles. Therefore, yeah. there's no genocide. It's quite literally like a, a joke. It is a joke. By the way, before we even continue here, the background today that you see in the background is not mainland China. It it's is not Taiwan. mainland China. It's not China, period. Yeah. Look, it's Taiwan. See, yeah. I put a little flag down there, but I'm I'm sitting in front of the flag. Just so you know, this was taken by uh, our friend YGZ, Old Lewis, in Taiwan. It's very recent. It's from last week. And that's the Fengjian Night Market. We just thought we'd roll a little bit of Taiwan for you guys today. Anyway, part of what they're doing with their whole Xinjiang strategy as pushback against allegations of genocide and forced labor and stuff is they send in foreigners to go and make videos about how cool it is and film some dancing Uyghurs and all that sort of thing. We've talked about this before. I got a video on my channel called uh, the Genocide Theme Park. It's pretty good. You should watch it. But we've caught them out. <clears throat> we've caught them out again. I'd like to read this tweet. It's just from another one of these uh, sort of Chinese state-sponsored type media things, and it's uh, somebody says, so sick of the mainstream Xinjiang in the mouth of Western media, they think they can really lie. Just come and look at how happy they are. The old guy in the first pic told me how blah, 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 blah. So there she is with one old guy. And this got me thinking, okay, I've seen an old guy before in all of the... Uh, <laughs> in all of these videos oh, now who's that i'd like you to all pay attention to this old guy with a beard on the, on the left okay yeah the, the top so the left over there just keep an eye on this guy because i went to multiple different videos multiple different sources oh look oh, it's the oh, same there he guy is. that's that's him huh it's kind of interesting interesting with a token foreigner oh wait, oh. wait what's this oh is that yeah that drunk Yo. alcoholic guy's channel yeah, look. the the. Uh, oh, he's there. What's that guy with the beard dancing around what with the What an authentic interaction. Yeah, who is this? Huh. Hmm. I wonder Same. if we'll see him in anything else. Yeah. Oh, wait, oh. what's this? Look at this. This is CGTN's official channel doing a fluff piece about Xinjiang. Mm. Now they've got him dressed up in a different outfit. Look, it's definitely the same old guy, for those of you at home. It's the exact same old Uyghur guy, and they've got him dressed now in a different Uyghur costume I, in a different setting. Can I explain why this is this matters? Why? They all, all of the state media channels and all over the, the shield channels that are shilling for the Chinese government to say there's no genocide, they keep saying that all of these experiences are authentic. And, oh, I just stumbled across this family that let me in their house. I just stumbled across this old man that likes to dance in the square. Sure. That's, that's how this is being marketed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see. So that's on the official CGTN channel. Oh, oh what do you know? That? Look, there's another random, like, uh, what you may call a propaganda person. They've got the same old guy dancing around. Let's see. Oh, look, it's even somebody else with the exact same old guy. <laughs> oh, look, this guy's <laughs> thumbnail's got the old guy in it. Who else? Hmm. Oh, there's the oh, old guy. Look, <laughs> Drunk at 60. Look who's in his footage. There's the old guy standing there to the entrance of something or other. Same old man. It's, uh, it's getting a bit ridiculous now because you can't hide this anymore. It's the exact same old man who's appearing in all of these different propaganda videos. Oh, look. Oh, a completely this? different time, a completely different place. Same. And different video. Same old man, different video. Different foreigner. Yeah, different foreigner. That, uh, what's an, uh, Anne or something is her name. Also, look, 
<laughs> same old man look different video. standing somewhere else now see he's not standing at the front gate and dancing now now he's standing at the entrance to someplace same old man okay what else have we got here um let's see oh yes here's another <laughs> who's that guy is like a copy editor for people's daily or something yeah yeah Whoa, what do you oh, know? He's, he's together with them. Yeah, look, same old guy, right? Different video, different trip. It's pretty pretty interesting that this old guy has appeared so many freaking times. So, I feel bad. I hope he didn't get him fired because it's not his fault. No, I mean, he's their token yeah, old Uyghur when, that they when use. When people, when they find out. No, I mean, look, that just was from me searching for about a uh, couple of minutes. Also, yeah. some of my, my friends actually pointed it out. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to them. They know who they are. They are the guys who, who brought it to my attention. And uh, then I looked through my own video about Xin, you know, the Xinjiang genocide theme park. And I noticed that old guy in, in there too. And then I noticed him in all of these guys' videos. And that was just from a little search. And he's in the official... Different parts of the city as yeah, well. Yeah. Official uh, CGTN. It's right there. And people stay He's being interviewed inside mosques and stuff. And it's completely different to him dancing around. Yeah, it's not. He's not being like. It's not like this is a famous dancer. Enjoy no. his dance. This is a random guy. Look at they. They use the dialogue. Look at this old man that I bumped into. Mm. Oh, see this traditional Uyghur man. Yes. And I've seen him in photos as well. Yeah. So the guy is like a multi-role prop. You know, he's just a a prop, like a piece of furniture, and they just yeah. dress him up in different outfits and put him in different places no, for the it's camera. Not his fault. No, no, no. But it just goes to show how insidious all of this nonsense is that they do. Right, right. So, you know, that we thought we'd just uh, yeah, kind of get that out of the way. Uh, I mean, it's a, good to, to show, I mean, anything to combat the uh, bullshit narrative in, in Xinjiang that uh, there's mm. no genocide. Exactly. Stop whitewashing genocide, guys. Exactly. So uh, let's go to our famous uh, fr friendly wolf warrior. Not friendly. He's, he's friendly horrible. now? Well, you know, he's like kind of like our friend now. We've, uh, known, we've known him for so long. He blocked you. Yeah. He he's not a fr friends don't block. No, he blocked me and he follows gay porn sites and whatever. This yeah. guy. Yeah. Uh, he actually Jin. followed a, a straight porn site the other day. I think oh, okay. he's trying to mix it up. Yeah, exactly. He just he should watch what he's following because it's public. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, what has he got to say? What are we talking about now? Uh, so the title of this video is How Japan is Secretly Beating well, China. That that means we should probably hit go straight into the soft power hour if we're going to start the um, Japan thing. Yeah. Okay. You want to answer a super chat before we do that? Sure, we can do that. We're just going to answer one super chat. One, one. super chat. Let's do one. Let's gonna... do the ones that got cleared. Okay. So then right. they don't feel like they got missed out on. Okay. All right. Uh, I when you guys when we start the stream, some of them get cleared. Yeah, out, they, they disappear, so. but we copy and we paste copy them, them beforehand. Yeah, so. yeah. David Brooks says, "Do you love or play Nintendo or video games at all?" Yes. We sure do. Yeah. Absolutely, big big gamers. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Tacit Turn says, "Are nuclear threats part of Chinese manners?" Would you agree that nuclear threats? You mean these? <laughs> Would you agree that nuclear threats should trigger automatic sanctions and IAEA investigations? I I, I do agree with that. Yes, yeah, I think, I think so. so many got Western got or West just governments in general get so tired of the bluster that they don't take it seriously anymore. Yeah, that's the thing. China, uh, you know, especially the diplomats like the Wolf Warriors, they run their mouth all the time. They yeah. threaten. They are <clears throat> out of place. They're tone deaf. They're you know, so they're just constantly putting out junk all the time. And I, I guess. People just stop taking them seriously because they're always like, "You're crossing a line. You're going to do this. You're going to face the wrath of this." So that and nothing ever happens. So whatever they say, people take with a pinch of salt these days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Zachary says, "Catch the stream every week. Xinjiang is important." Thank you very Thank much. You. Yes, it is. Okay, let's hit the soft power. This is our main segment where we talk about how China's trying to change your mind, or messing around in some way or the other, and we're going to be talking about Japan a lot. In yeah. this particular uh, situation. So, so um, yeah, explain. Dolly Jan, our favorite wolf warrior. A wolf warrior is a diplomat that goes on Twitter on behalf of the Chinese government. They're allowed to use VPNs. Yes. They're allowed to speak on behalf of China. Mm -hmm. uh, he is one of the foreign spokesmen. Um, wolf wanker, turd warrior. Wolf wanker, turd warrior. There's all kinds of names for them. I, I've heard people saying wolf warrior because all they do no, is bark. Wolf, yeah, wolf, wolf. Um, Anyway, Zhao Li Jian is one of our favorite. He has been caught up in a, a multitude of, of scandals, but mostly he's known for running his mouth 
uh, about things he shouldn't be running his mouth about. Sure. Genocide denial being one of his favorite topics. Yes. Um, he likes to go after the U.S. the most, though. And Australia. And Australia. He put that Photoshop picture of an Australian cutting the throat of someone or whatever. Of the child. Like, a child. And, you know, very tasteless and nonsense. Yeah, he just goes, he goes on. He's the first one who tweeted about the whole Fort Detrick thing, didn't yes, he? Yes, Like, oh, correct. it comes from the U.S. Right. He's Yeah, he's mm. he started that. And, uh, you know, it's crazy is that was so outlandish in the beginning that a lot of media picked it up. And they're like, wait, China's actually blaming the U.S. for, the, for COVID? Mm-hmm. And so that was considered like crazy. People were really pissed off him. Like, how dare China do this? And now he just goes like unfiltered about yes. Fort Detrick, like the, yeah, the conspiracy that U.S. released. Well, the whole of China is doing it now. Yeah, now it's now it's actually uh, the soup du jour, really. Mm-hmm. Everyone believes that now. Yes. Um, anyway, so um, Zhao Lijian, what he was doing here was going on about uh, this white paper that came out about Japan. Mm. And Japan basically is insinuating a scenario that it would defend Taiwan, uh, the U.S. And, and Japan together would defend Taiwan and the Taiwan Strait. Yeah. Um, given that China right now is threatening almost daily to invade Taiwan. Especially after the whole Afghanistan thing. And they're saying this is a golden opportunity. Look, America is so weak, they don't even defend their allies. Um, we'll defend Taiwan and nothing will be done about it. The thing is, when, when invasions happen... When military conflicts happen, there's not like a Twitter battle about it. Like, there's not usually like, we're going to get you. This is exactly what we're going to do. Sure. I didn't read that in The Art of War. I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but basically, they've been going on and on about this. And they've every time, they actually have to diplomatically say something. Mm-hmm. Because if they don't, then it makes China, this, their biggest fear is to look weak. Right? Yes. So what he said here was Taiwan, hashtag, they always use hashtags. Yeah. Hashtag Taiwan is an inalienable part of China's territory. We firmly oppose all forms of official interaction between Taiwan and countries having diplomatic ties with China. China is uh, has lodged solemn representations with hashtag Japan over its security talks with Taiwan. And this right. is all they do every time, right? Yeah, threaten exactly. war, threaten, threaten nuclear strikes, yeah. threaten, what is this, a solemn representation? Yeah, what whatever. is a solemn representation? Not quite sure. They send like a a serious a diorama we, of like we represent, how they feel. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, they send a map with a nine dash line on it or whatever. Maybe yeah. That's our representation. It's solid. <laughs> it's solemn, yeah. Yeah, solemn, um, yeah. It's like in a sad face. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he also says hashtag Japan deliberately released a children's version of its defense white paper repeating old rhetoric to smear and criticize China. So what he's trying to say here is that he's somehow mm-hmm. um, linking together the defense of Taiwan in a wartime scenario yeah. and the atrocities that Imperial Japan committed against against China. Don't know how those two are related. Nope. Um, two different countries now. Japan is not Imperial Japan. It certainly isn't. Um, and I think we can attest to that because... Both of us have been to Japan multiple times. Yep. Neither of us were tied up with bamboo sticks in a POW camp and tortured with bamboo under Correct. the fingernails and marched no. until we dropped dead. No. And we didn't, you know, drop bombs on them either while we were there. No. The thing I is, held back. the past is the past, you know? It's the, a different country. It's the it same as my grandfather fighting against the Germans in World War II doesn't stop me from liking German people today. Correct. My grandfather fought against the Japanese in yeah, World War II. Yeah, and a II. British person can visit Germany without worrying about uh, Hitler coming around the corner. And the same thing goes for a German person can visit the UK without worrying about being, you know, shot at or fought with a pitchfork or whatever. Yeah, no, I've seen some B-movies where sure, whatever. they come back to but life. <laughs> the fact of the matter is... Um, Japan is not the same Japan as it was back in the day. We're going to be talking about that uh, a fair amount. So, yeah. So, anyway, what do you think Charlie Jen said? Well, we firmly oppose this and have lodged solemn representation. Yeah, exactly. what is, someone please on our subreddit, mm. uh, reddit.com slash r slash ADV China. Maybe they could put a solemn representation make, of uh, Charlie Jen. Yeah, like make show us what his solemn representation would look like because yeah. we don't actually know. Yeah, so... Um, I mean, so anyway, he's quite butthurt about this whole scenario, so we yeah. thought we'd play this. Yeah, we got a little, little bit of a meme. Everybody take a look. Oh man, it looks like he's got a severe case of butthurt. Somebody call the ambulance. Nobody call the ambulance. Hello, ambulance. My brother's butt is hurting. I hang up that phone. But bro, your butt. And yep. that was Hua Chunying, by the way. Yes. Hua Chunying is the other foreign spokes lady. Yes. She's also famous for running her mouth and saying very horrible things. Yes. Okay. And uh, what do we got here? Well, she's been going on and on about what? 
She's been going on and on about the lab leak theory. Yeah. You know, China's been um, very insecure and uh, very cagey about this whole thing. In fact, they've been threatening because, you know, um, ice cream man, Biden, right? Yeah. <laughs> You, that's all you ever see him is with an ice cream. Yeah, yeah I like ice anyway, cream. Yeah, ice cream is great. But I wouldn't know, say it's my identity, though. No, no. Anyway, ice cream Biden has been going on about the having this 90-day report. Like, you got to report back in 90 days. Tell me where the lab leak came from. He asked the intelligence uh, you know, services here in America. So right before the report was released, China started to go, like, really crazy about threatening saying like if it comes out that you blame china for the lab leak there will be repercussions and all this kind of junk yeah so it's been kind of crazy recently about all of that and uh, we've seen hua Chunying again keep going on about it being a lab leak i mean what's she saying here i mean a lab leak in america that says the hashtag us again hashtags the hashtag us <laughs> is so obsessed with the lab leak theory it should invite hashtag WHO experts to conduct origin study at hashtag Fort Detrick and UNC. We should stand together against politicization of origins research and bring it back onto the right track for scientific cooperation. So the right track is to say it came from the U.S. This, yes. I mean, do you see how they massaged the theory in? Yes. It started out like outlandish. Like people are like, what the F are you actually talking about? Sure. They've done it so much now that they actually convinced their populace. This is the foreign spokesperson for China saying... All of China. Yeah, all of China saying that it came from a lab in America. I hope it sinks into all of you guys over there, but this is now the way the Chinese government thinks, and this is what all the people in China think too. So for those of you who might think, oh, it's just a crazy spokesperson or whatever, no. The average person on the street in China now fully believes, because it's in the media and they've been told by their politicians, they've been told by the government, that COVID, which came from Wuhan, doesn't come from China. It comes from a lab in America. That's what everyone believes. So, you know, here in the West... Everybody likes to have a little debate. People will say, oh, yeah, maybe it came from Wuhan. Maybe it came from a lab leak. Maybe it came from a zoonotic. zoonotic so maybe it came from a bat or a pangolin or whatever. Maybe it came from something else. And you get the tinfoil hat guys who are like, oh, it's a biological weapon that was smuggled in here and there. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a debate. That's all fine. But China unifies everybody together to say it's America's fault. And it works. We don't see that here. We don't see everyone getting together and saying, you know, it's China's fault, and now we have to do something about it. We don't see that because we're reasonable in the West here. We know that, yeah, it is the CCP's fault, no doubt, that the pandemic broke out the way it did. But you don't see everyone uniting in America and other places of the world to attack China and say, it's your fault, it's your fault, and attack Chinese people. It's your fault, it's your fault. But in, in China right now, they are all unifying, saying it's America's fault, it's America's fault. And foreigners living in China are being treated like viruses, okay? I've got footage, I've got video clips that I'm going to be showing in a short time, not on this show, but we'll show maybe next week, perhaps, of how foreigners are being treated within China. When you walk into a certain place, like a place of work or something, you get scanned, you have to show your travel history, but the Chinese employees do not. They just get to walk in. You have to walk in through a separate door in some cases. It's, it's a mess. It's not very good. So we have to always remember that we're friendly in the West. We tend to like to give everybody the benefit of the doubt, treat people more equally. But in China, it's not like that. There's no political correctness. It's a straight shot. And what they are saying right now is that this came from America. And that's what people are believing. So just bear that in mind whenever you're having a debate. Not only did it come from America, it spread there first too, yes. to some nursing home down the road. Yeah, this is what they're saying. So, you know, when you're having a debate with someone and they're defending China, it's all, it's all good to defend China and to defend Chinese people. They don't deserve a blame in this. But you also have to realize that they're not defending um, you in the same kind of conversation over in China. They're just blaming you all blanketly, you know? Correct. Anyway, so what you are, means, we had some people spamming CCP propaganda in the live. Oh, we did about this, which is great. Saying it was Fort Detrick. Of course. Anyway, she goes on and on and on. It's not all that important. Let's get on to the main segment here. Let me just bring it up in the background. Uh, I want you to take a look at what's happening behind us. I'm sure you noticed in the thumbnail. Okay, this um, this pretty lady wearing a dress. Well, she is a Chinese celebrity. And I got to tell you, when this story broke, um, just give me a second. 
Yeah, I don't want to mess this up. I've forgotten how to pronounce her name. <laughs> Give me a second. It what? is Zhao Wei. Sorry, Zhao Wei. Wei. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when this particular incident happened that happened above, I was in China at the time, and I remember it was a big hoo-ha. She's a Chinese actress. She's very famous for her roles in period dramas. <laughs> What's a period drama? Let me find a picture of her in a period drama. Hang on. Where is she? She's not around. Wait, no, 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 no. Where, did, where are the pictures of her in the period? Where are all the pictures of them? You didn't, what? Where are all the pictures of the celebrities? I gave uh, you a whole folder. I dumped everything in, into this, into here. Really? They're not yeah. there. Can you just chuck them on the desktop there and I'll sure. make a plan? Anyway, <clears throat> she's very famous for her role in period dramas uh, and various other, you know, TV shows and everything like that. And uh, she went on a photo shoot, okay, a model photo shoot, and she wore this dress. Now, a lot of you out there maybe don't realize the significance of this dress. It is uh, a dress with the Japanese rising sun flag. Now, we have to talk about the rising sun flag. By the way, also dotted around just the normal Japanese flag. The rising sun flag is a bad, bad, bad thing in uh, China. And the reason being that the Japanese Imperial Army during the very bad times when Japan was doing all sorts of horrible things to the world, that was their flag. Right? It's kind of like the Nazis having a swash stick. It's the same thing. It has the same connotations in mainland China. Okay, uh, they're on there. You've, you've got them on the desktop? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm going to... I'll show them in a second. I have to set that up. <clears throat> the fact of the matter is that she wore this on a photo shoot, a model photo shoot, and she didn't think twice about it. She didn't really... She obviously didn't realize what she was doing would be offensive. Right. Uh, and to be honest, it's not an offensive flag in... Japan, I'm going to go forward a little bit and show you, let's get past all this crap. It is still currently used by the Navy in Japan. You can see it there on a, on a Navy vessel. It's been used since the ancient Japan, the samurai and stuff used since to use it. Ancient times. Yeah, since ancient times. That's actually, you can see it, a 1920s uh, poster for tuberculosis <laughs> prevention. Okay. Um, Another interesting thing, you can see here on the wall, you can see it in that picture with a fish. Mm -hmm. and I'll show you another, there should be another picture of that <clears> somewhere here. Anyway, when a fisherman, or when a fisherman uh, catches a big catch, they will put that flag up in front of their stall in Japan <clears> to show you that they've hauled in a big catch. It's like a symbol to say, come by, we've got a big catch, right? Uh -huh. Show the rising sun flag with a fish. You can see it here in ancient um, samurai times, you know. Ukyo Prince, this is not that long ago. This says Asahi Biru on the side there, so Asahi Beer. You know, it's on the beer cans. It's still used today. There we go. There's outside a fish shop. You see the, the there it is, the rising sun symbol is to show that, hey, we've, we've had a big catch today. So it's not as bad in Japan and other parts of the world. It's not seen as such an evil symbol. Yeah, I see it on people's bumper stickers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can even go and buy, like, you know, on your favorite from your favorite uh, website or shopping clothing shop or whatever you can buy a, uh, a rising sun flag you know for yourself. i'll be honest i wouldn't use that flag just because i lived in china yes and i know how many feelings can be but hurt. in china this is what it represents right okay the japanese imperialist army which kicked china's ass so badly that it's just it's appalling okay it's a very embarrassing part of history for China. It's an awful part of history for China. There were terrible things like the Nanjing Massacre and various other horrible things that uh, happened. Unit 731, you can look that up if you want nightmares. All sorts of terrible things happened under the imperialist Japanese army in China. And that is why it is seen as such a controversial thing in China, right? Now, why am I talking about this today? Because this, this incident happened... So you see, it's still used today in Japan. This this incident with the dress happened probably 10 years ago now. Mm, it was a long time ago. Yeah, 10, 11, yeah. 12 years ago. It was a long, long time ago, over a decade ago. Well, there's been this massive big ramp up in um, nationalism and in China and Ai Guo. Do you want to explain what Ai Guo means? It's just nationalism. It just means Ai means love, Guo means country, mm. so love country. But they call it, you are not Ai Guo, you know? So there's been this huge ramp up of Ai Guo in, in China right now. 
And so celebrities are suddenly getting into trouble for things they did in the past. Mm. So, for instance, she is now, there's been some other controversy about something she was trying to sell online to do with stocks or something like that. And mm. so they then brought up this dress of hers from the she's past. A, she's already gone through this, right? Yeah. When I was there and this happened, I remember it being printed out in the newspaper. I yeah, used to I read the that. newspaper yeah. and stuff. And she had to apologize. It was a huge thing. This it, is a huge headline back then. I mean, then. it made a huge dent in her career for wearing that dress. She just went on a fashion shoot. She was just wearing whatever clothes they gave her. Right. She didn't really know no. or understand what was going on. I think that picture looks pretty fantastic, by the way. I like it. I like the picture. I mean, I like the fashion idea, you know personally and like outside of china i think it's cool mm. not in china of course and no. it's, i guess it is it, it is kind of like a a jewish superstar wearing a an ss it's uniform definitely or something tasteless it's, as it's hell, tasteless dude. as hell yeah it's bad. <laughs> absolutely it's definitely it's really bad. bad i'm I'm just trying to put it into yeah, perspective yeah. here anyway the fact of the matter is they've dug this old photo of hers up again and now they've deleted her from all TV shows and all any media, any movies, anything she's ever done in the past in China, they've now deleted her name from it. So they've removed them from the credits and from anything. So if you try to search her name, you can't find anything anymore in China. So this didn't, the, the thing, the point of, about this yeah. is interesting is they're doing it now. Yes. So this is like now. retroactively. She already suffered through this whole shit. She's already yes. gone through all this stuff. She wasn't canceled back then. She was criticized. Yes. She had to apologize, say, holy shit, I didn't know what I was doing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then everyone said, okay, it's fine. It's yeah. now that they're going after her, right? Yeah. And yeah. similar situation with uh, with uh, Zhang Jahan over here. Yeah, Zhang Jahan is the guy. If you look on the other side of the screen, you can see um, Zhang Jahan over here. He's another one who's very famous for period dramas and so on. We'll you dig can pull up those photos. I have them on the desktop. Yeah, you do. Okay. I just have to quickly add them to our little photos thing here. So give me a second. So I'll explain what's happening here while you yeah. do that. So well, it's, it will go away for a second if I do that's that. That's okay. You guys can immortalize these photos in yeah, your You can mind. see the pictures, yeah. What's going on with him? So he's standing in front of a shrine, actually. It look, just looks like he's... Whoa! I see yeah. something really cool on there, but I don't think anyone else sees that. Yeah, yeah, well, um, hey, everyone sees it. Oh, everyone sees it? <laughs> yeah, we could talk about it in a minute. Okay, well. Did you put it in a folder or just? Yeah, it's called uh, Stupid Celebs. Okay, there we go, there Stupid go. Celebs. <laughs> We're not calling them stupid. No, 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 it's just stupid it's what happened stupid to what them. happened to them. Yeah. Um, so. Okay, sorry. Okay, it's okay, everyone's... <laughs> There we go. Some random stuff. Yes, this okay, is this Jung is Jung Jahan. Jahan. So basically, he's pretty he was white, a, man. He's so white, I think he's probably owned slaves. He, lo <laughs> he literally looks translucent. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what the hell is this? White face. <laughs> I don't know. What is he anyway, doing? Jung Jahan over there. Um, this is um, Zhao, Wei. Zhao Wei in one of her period dramas. What is period <laughs> drama? It's like when women get super upset that they don't have a tampon. <laughs> Give me a tampon. <laughs> I don't have any tampon. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway, is um, is? yeah, this this is just pictures of the the celebrity, so you can understand who we're talking about here. Uh -huh. There, there he is again, Zhang Jahan. Yeah, super handsome. Oh, I thought that was the chick. No, <laughs> I that was S super handsome Skill. guy. Skill. He's a heartthrob, you know. He's, oh, look at that! By yeah. the way, that McLaren went by in Taiwan. Oh yeah, that's interesting. True. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, so just showing you what these these guys look like. Now we're getting back to him because here's Zhang Jahan at his friend's wedding. Uh -huh. Okay. He went, he has a Japanese friend, which, you know, being Chinese is sometimes seen as a bad thing for some reason. I got lots of Japanese friends. It used to be a pretty awful situation. I remember going out with my Japanese friends in China was always a hairy situation. Mm. Because especially if you're out drinking oh, yeah, somewhere. I, know. I remember. If people catch a hint that, you know, your friends are Japanese, they, if they've been drinking and stuff, it can cause a bad situation. So we'd always like pretend that our friends were you know thai or you know sure. from philippines I'm or sorry, i just can't get period but, drama yeah know. stop i'm just thinking like what it could be like a scene and it's like you know the narrator would be like the bloody moment that just this happens stop, stop. <laughs> okay we got enough shit we don't need more okay, okay? you didn't explain what period drama means well, it means it's from a certain period a period of time which is always <laughs> yeah. ancient china yes and they yes. all look the same the not mm. the people the dramas all yeah. of them look identical it's you know typical hanfu like yeah, yeah. they're wearing the traditional clothing long hair and it's uh wear silken robes and stuff and flying through the air you know that yeah <laughs> you know that silk yeah. sound that it, you know <laughs> and then someone's like you know it's it's that kind of thing and it's like 
Bisha, whatever, Shabi, whatever they say, you know? Anyway, yeah. let's continue. Somebody says the guy looks like Seamilk. That's a very big, uh, I think that's a very big compliment there, to there me. There he is. He's very, much more handsome than I am. <laughs> yeah. Shit, thank you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, just to show you how popular these act- well, this, this actress is, there she is with Jack Ma, you know, for instance. Um, yeah, and there he is again, Jung Jahan. So the picture mm. you saw previously was him at his friend's wedding. Now he's got a Japanese friend, so he went to Japan. <laughs> What? Sorry. What? I'm sorry. Nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so he went to Japan. Because I'm, I'm looking at something over here. I'm not looking at that. Uh, okay, let's get I back. I just thought that the controversial photo, when you go back to it, I'll, I'll point out what I okay, was laughing Okay, all right. At. So, <laughs> what? It's what? a period drama. I mean, <laughs> tell me what she's wearing doesn't look like a maxi pad. <laughs> <laughs> stop, okay? Just stop. Um, <laughs> it's ridiculous. So <clears throat> you can see him now taking some photos. And there's some nice sakura trees in the background. And he's, yeah. But he's in front of a, a, shrine. Sh- a shrine. Yeah. Okay. And he does like a, a, a peace sign. Because that's what people, especially Asians, not just Chinese, Asian people, whenever they take photos, they like to do the peace sign. It's just, yeah. Yeah. it's very common, right? Or it's this. the pose. Yeah. All it's this like framing way. your face. Problem is, the shrine that he took a photo in front of there is the Yasukuni shrine, which is the shrine where they go and pray to like war criminals. Okay. Uh, by war criminals, I mean they go to honor the dead. So they go to honor dead army generals and that kind of thing, right? And sometimes politicians go to pray there. You know, people can go to pray there to honor the dead. The problem is the pe- the dead people that they're honoring in that particular shrine are the people that were, you know, invading China and doing all those terrible things during the bad old days of Imperial Japan. So it's a big flashpoint. Every single time a Japanese prime minister or a Japanese politician goes to pray at that particular shrine it makes headlines in china it's a huge thing and they're like how dare japan you know how dare they go and honor these war criminals that are responsible for all the deaths and stuff in china which i understand the sentiment behind that okay i don't think he realized it was that shrine no, it doesn't look, judging from the photos, it doesn't he's look just, like he's like, yo, I am yeah. so happy to, I'm so happy to be canceled in Chinese media, because that's what that means. He's literally walking around, taking photos of himself in front of Sakura trees and stuff, and one of the pictures, and they all look very similar there, it has the shrine in the background, okay? So I'm going to be on his side over here and oh, say, of course. he didn't maliciously go there no. and say, yeah, war criminal shrine. If he knew what that shrine was, he knows that he's done. Yeah. That's the point. You wouldn't do that. No, suicide. you wouldn't. You wouldn't. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, look at the date when he posted that. Yeah, it was 2018. 2018. So again, Three it's retroactive. Ago. This is just blown up now, okay? Yeah. Like within the past week. And this guy has been so canceled that not only did they remove his name from the credits, they've gone to like TV shows from like 10 years ago that he was in and cut out all his parts. It's ridiculous. So whenever he are, he's supposed to be on camera, they just cut that out. Yeah. It shows you how ridiculous we've, it is. This isn't the first time we've covered something like this. Remember that chick yeah, that got arrested? Photoshop- they they uh, AI'd her, her, her it was so bad. 3D face yes. into the, the soap opera. It was opera. so, so bad. It's also a period drama. <laughs> yes, they all are. There's nothing else on Chinese TV. There's a debate it's in the a, live what? chat where some people are supporting my period drama jokes and some people are telling me to grow up and it's... <laughs> It's just, never mind. Yeah, I yeah. mean, the fact of the matter, I'm going to be blunt with you. Chinese TV is pretty boring because it's either a period yeah. drama or it's that war of resistance where they're killing Japanese people yeah. or it's like Which is also a period news. drama. <laughs> yeah. True. That's like male period drama. Or like drama. singing shows. Yeah, or singing shows. That's it. Yeah. That's all there is on Chinese TV. Yeah. Literally. It's really, really boring. Uh, you'll see for yourself if you're over there. He, somebody said he got so canceled they got rid of his birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> they probably did. Yeah. Poor anyway, guy. I feel bad for both of them. I, I do too because look, obviously in both cases here it was an honest mistake. Mm. You know, it's not like they're malicious. If it was malicious, it's like if you and I went out there and did something very insensitive on purpose. Like I don't know, we specifically went out and wore like a Nazi uniform and jumped up and down on someone's grave or something, then... Why would anyone just, do I'm that? I'm just saying, it's not, not like, it's not like she went to, yeah, yeah, to yeah. this photo shoot and said, I want I to, wear to wear the Japanese imperial yeah. flag, okay? Right. And I wanted you to write, kill all Chinese on it. Right. You know, she didn't do that. No. It doesn't no. say that, by the no, way. No, it doesn't. But, you know, that's the fact is, an honest mistake, which she's already apologized for, he's walking around at his friend's he's, wedding taking photos. He's... 
he's less guilty than her. Yeah. Because at least, I mean, honestly, if she grew up in China, she should know what that flag means, yeah. right? The problem with this guy, this guy's no idea. He's taking a picture of a freaking tree. Yeah, exactly. He's Leave walking around this. You know, the, the, the shrine areas in Japan are awesome. You've been there, right? Yeah, and You yeah, walk absolutely. around, doesn't matter yeah. if you're at a castle or whatever. Yeah. They keep the grounds really nice. The security trees look gorgeous. You know, you walk around, it looks fantastic. You take photos, okay? And the shrine looks cool too. Yep. So, you know, unless you're a freaking geography expert or whatever, uh, you're not going to really know. CCTV actually report uh, put out a, a statement. What does yeah, it say? Yeah, it says... Uh People who do not know the history cannot tell right from wrong. So he's saying they are guilty because they didn't know the history. Yeah. So that's what CCTV, the Chinese Central yeah. Television, uh, said about him. They they actively helped to cancel them. Yeah. Now you actually have uh, something to add to this. So and why why is this suddenly happened? Because she didn't do this recently. Thank you for saying that. He didn't that. do this recently. Yes. So what is this? This all is about? where my expertise comes in. Go again. And Go ahead. so I like to, and this is going to sound ridiculous to a lot of you, but I like to peruse legal documents in Chinese, mm -hmm. and what I'm not like like someone suing each other. I like to see what the government puts out there about new laws. Yeah. And so I had got some of these translated. So, well, I, we translated them. Yeah. Um, some of these are the uh, what's it called? The bullet points of the new law based on morality guidelines for entertainers. Okay. Now, actually, this law came out in like 2019, but it wasn't for entertainment. Okay. It was the morality guidelines of Chinese traveling abroad. Mm -hmm. So what happened was there was a meme going around about bad Chinese tourists. I yeah. actually think there's like a subreddit or something about that. That always kind of pissed me off because it's like, don't like t target that. You should point out bad behavior or whatever, but it's like uh, making a subreddit about <laughs> it's like a certain group of people. Anyway. Well, I mean, it's like people of Walmart. Exactly. Except it's like a whole, whole anyway, it's a whole thing. The well, point is Walmart, it works. Walmart people are a nation, dude. Walmart nation could be a thing. <laughs> yeah. So long story short is China, the Chinese government lost so much face about bad behavior of Chinese tourists because a lot of them, to be honest, in the lost generation are very badly behaved. They don't know how to, right? they don't have any appreciation for other cultures. No. And so they don't know. Especially on these tour groups, which are, don't, and mm. they don't help integrate them into understanding what they're going to see. No. Right? They're like, okay, the bus stops here for five minutes. Go take your picture. Get back on the bus. Right? Yeah. That's how my parents-in-law traveled around. That's how a lot of people travel sure. around. So... They got embarrassed about the behavior of their citizens abroad, so they made it a, a national rejuvenation campaign to basically say, when you go abroad, you represent all of China. Mm -hmm. So if you F up abroad, your, your uh, uh, what's it called? Social credit score will be affected. Social credit score will be affected. Not only that, but you are, you'll be liable, right? Yeah, yeah for losing the face of all Chinese people. So yeah. that was the uh, law they put out called the uh, morality guidelines for Chinese tourists abroad. Sure. They took that... Uh, law and they carried it over a couple months ago to entertainers. Yeah, so now entertainers are held to a much higher standard because they're role, mo moral, uh, role models. Correct, correct. Yes, role morals as well. They, they do both. They right? ro role model morals. They do. Mm. So uh, so basically, the just like Chinese tourists abroad, now Chinese actors and actresses can't get embroiled into scandals because then they lose the face of Chinese people again, mm. right? Mm. And like you said, they're bad role models for other people, right? Yes. It's this bullshit, absolute farce mm. of an idea that China is some very uh, moral beacon moral, on the Moral, pure right? place. Yeah. Um, and it's just not the case. But they, what nope. they do is they, they, I mean, yeah. Totally not. <laughs> no. Uh, so what they have to do is at least keep up that appearance. Sure. So what I wanted to do is we translated some of these um, guidelines, uh, guidelines yeah, for, for, the, for the celebrities, right? And bear this in mind, this is why these guys are now getting into trouble. Yeah, so this is directly attached to this. Yeah. So well, the first law is, and these are laws, right? Mm -hmm. Love the motherland and support the party's line and policies. So publicly, they're not allowed to go against anything. They wouldn't do that anyway. No, you can't stand up against the no. CCP. Even an average <laughs> citizen can't. The thing is, that, that will yeah. blanket cover things that are even moderately controversial, right? right. Uh, next one is persevere in an orientation that literature and art should serve the people and socialism. So keep in mind, this is directed at, at celebrities. This is a new law. Mm. So you have to promote socialism, basically. Yeah, so literature and art should promote socialism. 
So and it's they're, they're, they're art. The people, that's boring. <laughs> so, I mean, this is like freaking Orwell stuff, right? Yeah. This is the Soviet Union. This right? is the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. uh, actively uphold a positive image. And that's, again, they can't get embroiled into scandals, yes. right? Sexual scandals, adultery. That would explain like that. Chris Wu or whatever. Who's Chris Wu. Being... People were pissed off because we didn't bring him up. Chris Wu just got arrested for like rape or something. Yeah. Um, that's, like, that's different to this, though, because it is, but that's it's, like a legitimate whatever. He, yeah, it's a legitimate sounds, criminal sounds like case. legitimate cr criminal. But, you know, what these guys are being canceled for is just petty. Yes. Anyway, yeah. Uh, actively participate in social charity events, help the development of public welfare undertakings and consciously put social responsibility into practice. That sounds fine. I mean, yeah, but it's all but politically it motivated. But it shouldn't be a guideline. I mean, it's it shouldn't a be like, yeah, it's, it's like a in law. law. It's a law. <laughs> It's like, if you want to participate in charity, you should be able to do that out of your own heart. That's why it's called charity, Correct. not well, tax. And I hate, to, <laughs> I hate to bring this up, and this is assault, and it actually makes me feel a little ashamed, mm -hmm. um, just because it's, it's pretty awful, but China is the least charitable country in the entire world. Absolutely is. It's not, it's not conjecture, it's statistically. It's true, you can look it up. It is the um, least charitable country. It's below, like... Even poor countries Syria like Yemen. And stuff is yeah. more charitable. And I'm just China. saying, I brought that up because they're poor, right? Mm. Um, jeopardize national unity, sovereignty, and territorial integrity. So this is anything related to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So if someone said, like, for example, if this, uh, let's just pick a different celebrity. Let's say if Jack Ma or something held up in a map of China and didn't have Taiwan, Taiwan on it, yeah. that would break this law. Endanger national security. There you go. New national security law, like mm -hmm. you're seeing in Hong Kong. Yeah. Or damage national honor and interests. So to damage national honor can mean anything. That's what we're looking at here. Yes. That's what's happening with the flag. Um, you know, I yeah, can bring just it pop back. that back up. So, yeah. D well, we, that's damaging national that's honor what right the, there. That's what this is. Yeah. So yeah. this uh, Zhao Wei is definitely getting hit with that and then so is Zhang Zhan. The yeah. problem is this happened a long time ago. This is a new law. Yeah. Right? This is new. Why is she getting hit with this now? Right? Well it was something else. Like I said, she was she's she did something that pissed people off and then but they you, brought this up again. You know it because it's in relation yeah, to of this. course but it's only when they brought up this yeah. dress thing again right. that she got cancelled. Right, Not correct. just because of this new thing. No. This, it's this. It's this dress. It's this. It's th this is what actually caused the, the hubbub. Well, I mean, yeah. there's not that much information about what she did to, to piss off the other, yeah. the other part. Anyway, excuse me. Incite hatred against ethnic groups. In, uh, discriminate against ethnic groups. Infringe the customs and habits of ethnic groups. Insult ethnic groups or undermine national unity. Now, that sounds good. But it's you just know, you there, know it's funny? just there for face. Yeah. It's not just there for face. Undermine mm -hmm. national unity means they can't promote. So you're you're gonna say, oh, this is gonna help the Uyghurs, this is gonna help the net the the ethnic minorities in China. It's the other way around. Yes. It's if you insinuated that Uyghurs are, are not Chinese. China, China, if yeah. yeah, if you insinuated that Tibetans are maybe separate from China in some way, that's actually what this covers. Sure. There is no this this law is not gonna if you said I, I hate Uyghurs or something, this law wouldn't be enacted. Yeah. If you said, Oh, Uyghurs speak a different language and they're they're kind of different to us, Their Chinese. History and culture <clears throat> is different from China's. Yeah. 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 That's actually what that law covers. Sure. Um, organize, participate in, or promote illegal activities regarding obscenities, pornography, gambling, drugs, violence, terrorism, or criminal elements. Squeaky clean image, or else you're. It's got to be squeaky eh. clean, even though it's the least squeaky clean society. We did it. We did a pretty uh, thorough video on ADV China where we drove around Hollywood, yeah. and uh, we were talking about how celebrities are so different in China yeah. versus the U.S. Because yeah. in the U.S., you're kind of celebrated for being against the grain. That's why you get famous. You're like different than everybody. Well, and like every celebrity and rock singer or whatever is always in rehab over right. here anyway. Scandals. It's always some nonsense. Got like 10 wives or husbands or whatever. It has bizarre beliefs. Yeah, right. exactly. It's like adopting random kids from around the world. Sure. Like doing stuff. Yeah. That's different than what normal Making people do. Making wear blankets do. over their face or whatever. Sure. Yeah. Like, it wasn't that like Michael, Michael J. J. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. There's always some... Yeah, there's always child. some weird it's stuff. It's some weird shit going yeah, on. Yeah, but in China, no. <laughs> no. Like Tom yeah. Cruise is a Scientologist. There's, yeah. well, that's what I was getting at. It's like they're yeah. all very individualistic, like yeah. very different than, than you or me or anyone else. Sure. So... Uh, in China, it's conformist, right? Yeah. If you get embroiled into something that would potentially make you more famous in the West, it's the polar opposite. In China, they'll actually just cut you off. You do realize <laughs> there's some kid running around with the name Blanket Jackson. 
His name is Blanket? Yes. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> is it really? He named him Blanket? Yeah. I vaguely remember that. And just like... <laughs> is that the one he held out the window? I don't know. Just Blanket Jackson. Like, His name's... Oh, let me Google that real It's quick. definitely Blanket. It's Blanket? Yeah. That was... Yeah. <laughs> blanket. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> blanket Jackson, yeah. Anyway. Pri he's a prince. He's called Prince Michael prince... Blanket Jackson the <laughs> second. <laughs> prince... Uh Michael Jackson the mm second, -hmm. Blanket Jackson. He's called Blanket. I think that was supposed to be his, his real I name. Feel bad for him. Mm. Poor Blanket. Yeah, born Prince Michael Jackson Blanket the second. Whatever. I mean, hey, matter. more power to him. Yeah, it's a bit of a blanket statement over there. His dad is a great musician. Was he out adopted? No. It's oh, he real. made him. Yeah. Okay. Under duress, I feel. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, okay, last thing. Yeah. Uh, poor kid. I think that was with Priscilla Presley. That's right. He did the stint in when he's. I don't like him. Let's into this. go. Let's continue. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's move, let's we're move away. Dangerous from, territory yeah, here. Let's move away. Uh, violate national religion what time, policies. What, what, what time is bedtime at the Jackson Neverland Ranch? What? When the big hand touches the little hand. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. See, I, this is what I was avoiding. Okay, let's move on. Did you watch that documentary? Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's after, I believe those guys. Mm. It's. F that. Anyway, F that. yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> violate national religion policies, right. promote culture superstition. Again, if you are not publicly atheist in China, mm -hmm. you're going to be in trouble. Um, unless you said, I follow the state brand of Christianity or something. But even then, that would be a bit dicey. Right. Um, so again, they hate religion, they hate mm -hmm. superstition, following Gong, all that kind of stuff. Sure, right? sure. Uh, and then last one. And this is, again, this shows you what a knee jerk reaction to this is yeah. they get worried that people are going to judge china for being fake yeah. so what do they put a law in do lip sync in professional performances so they've now banned lip syncing in professional performances and the funny thing about that is is that's a china the chinese government usually pushed for that because I mean, they didn't the want any beijing, mistakes the beijing olympics yeah. opening was a completely different girl singing the song, just lip syncing. Because they said the girl that was actually singing was too ugly. Yeah. So they yeah. got a pretty girl yes. to pretend and lip sync. They designed this this insecurity. But now celebrities aren't allowed to do that. And then deceive the audience by playing fake instruments. So this not is a to do very that. CCP thing to do: playing yeah. fake instruments and lip syncing. But now, because they've been caught out, yeah. Now they're like, oh, you can't do that anymore. Sure. Such an e jerk thing. It's terrible. Yeah, so anyway, this is the reason why we're seeing such a big backlash against these particular celebrities, and more will be coming soon. It's because of all these terrible new laws that they've put in place, these guidelines for celebrities. Right. You know. So, oh, yeah, sorry. No, 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 go ahead. I was just going to say, um, to go back to the Zhao Wei thing, mm -hmm. this kind of stuff is always brought up. You could just see some of the uh, reactions yeah. to, to poor old Zhao Wei. He's being lambasted all over. She is, yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm talking about <laughs> Zhang Zhan. Zhang yeah. <laughs> Zhang Zhan. Remember, we confuse them because they look so similar. In those photos, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway. <laughs> Skip, I'll show a couple photos so you guys know who we're talking about again. Yes. Yeah. So, oh, what I was going to say is with Zhao Wei, mm -hmm. that uh, photo is very apt with the, the uh, Jack Ma thing. Mm -hmm. She got embroiled in Jack Ma's whole, you know, Jack Ma is getting kind of purged, right? sure. sure. Uh, she was involved in, in something that he was doing, right? Mm -hmm. And the Chinese government is... Not to use the word blanket because it's going to make me think of Michael <laughs> Jackson now, but blanket yeah. kind of persecuting anyone involved with that IPO, right? Yeah. yeah. So what happened was <laughs> stop. You so know, what like happened? Teeth whitening was, commercials. I feel like I know, it's just it's a, like a person whitening. whitening commercial. Right. They have literally have skin whitening commercials in China. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, she was involved with that, right? And mm -hmm. China doesn't like that. So what do they do? Let's bring up an ancient ass photo yeah. and get everyone riled up so we have a reason yeah. to make her go go away. Sure. Right? And sure. again, it's, it's, it's politically motivated. It's right. not because anyone's actually that upset anymore about that dress. No, of course. Right, it's a scapegoat. It's just bringing it. It's like they do every time. They're always bringing up something about Japan whenever their politicians are misbehaving. In correct. China. Correct. It's just like you saw Bo Xi Lai. Yeah. Right? Senkaku Islands. Senkaku Islands. China didn't give a shit about the Diaoyu Islands or the no. Senkaku Islands. They didn't give a shit about that controversy. Then this massive controversy happens in China yeah. where Bo Xi Lai is getting, uh, facing trial, yeah. holds massive power, mm -hmm. right? And then they don't want people to pay attention to it. 
So yeah. what do they do? They come up with this. They're like, go ahead and go protest in the streets, guys. Go flip cars and burn down sushi shops. Yeah, exactly. Because that's what you need to do. Right. This is how they work. Yeah. Right? Anyway. Yeah. Cool. Uh, you know, we were talking about um, Zhao Lijian back there. I mean, not no. We were talking about Hua Chunying. Yeah, yeah. You know, she's talking about that lab leak theory and everything. I think we have to once again talk about our friend Peter Dazak. You mean Peter Balsack? Peter Balsack. You know, we call him Peter Balsack. Balsack. <laughs> uh, why, why do we have to talk about him? Because he sucks, that's why. <laughs> we haven't, why does he suck? We haven't forgotten about you, Peter. Because he's one of the main mm. reasons why the WHO and the whole world had the wool pulled over their eyes. Because he was seen as an expert who had contradicted himself over and over again. Just before the pandemic, it was all different to what he was saying about how they're manipulating the, the coronavirus is in that exact lab. And then goes and says, no, we didn't do spikes. that. We definitely didn't do that. No, and then he was like, no. It's on YouTube, dude. Yeah. Exactly. Then you said like, it on oh, YouTube. There are no uh, live bats kept there. And then, like, and then they the find footage finds bats. out that not only did the lab put patents out for and cages. He, but he knows this. But he obviously, he's yeah. a joint partner with the right. lab. He right. gave them funding right. through his Eco Health Alliance. We can't let Balzac get off the, off the hook here, guys. So remember, every time you see something about the Wuhan lab, don't forget our friend, Peter Dazak, otherwise known as Peter. Balzac. Just had to put that out there. Throw him, do an encore. Okay, let's go one more time. Perfect. Okay, cool. Now can we move Fantastic. on? Um, <laughs> yes, people love it. Uh, <laughs> yes, we can move on. Okay, excellent. We're going to move on, guys. So we're going to take a couple of uh, Super Chat questions before we move on to our next segment. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got um, Andrew Bomer, who says, I've been following ADV China since the beginning of summer. Cool. But lately, going back and viewing your individual channels, enjoying your insights. Thank you very much. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Case Closed 93 says, Winston, I'm not a big Star Wars fan, uh, but I think South Africa is Tatooine. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just not going to go into the rest. That's, yeah, so sorry, I mean, it's possibly similar. Um, <laughs> Sasario JPN still no Taiwanese beer sponsorship. I know, now. isn't that terrible? I love Taiwanese. I feel like beer. they're not. I feel like they're just not marketing. I've yeah. never seen them market abroad ever. There is a, an ancient Chinese saying. Uh, let me think if I can get this right. The peach and the plum does not create, does not have to create a path under its tree. What? It's something along those lines. I used to be, you know, I, yeah, I kind of yeah, like yeah. all these idioms. It basically means if the fruit is good enough, people will create their own path. They'll go there to get it. Oh, So sure. like the peach yeah, and the plum does not create its own path underneath the tree. That means it's so good that people go there and they take it themselves. So I think that's what's happening with Taiwanese beer. It's so good, they don't have to market. It's not that good. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty damn great, dude. That 18 day one. I, I like the is, principle is of it, it. Is it the 18 day? Yeah, yeah. That one's fantastic. Yeah, going to get that here. Yeah, it'll take 18 days to reach here. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, Hauntus yeah. Farmer says, Great show as usual. Do you think the party is also over for the CCP shills and apologists? Uh, long live Xinjiang Uyghurs. Not yet. Um, not yet. It will eventually. Look, they're not being yeah. hit by this whole English teaching thing. It, the, the video I released this morning, the party is over in China. If you have, have a chance, please watch it. Um, I just talk about how this, and we spoke about it last week, how this new law regarding education has pretty much wiped out an entire industry and a huge, I'd say, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'd say a good 70% of foreigners that were currently in China right now were affected by this yeah and to further that even before this happened i would say a good 70 percent of foreigners i knew in china had already yeah, left had already left because of because all the of nonsense and the covid and yeah and, uh, um yeah so it, it's pretty bad but the actual ccp itself well we'll just have to wait and right. we'll see what they do with these shills because once they're no longer useful then they'll feel the pinch right matt peter says how do you spell chopedoa and i think he means cha bu doa cha bu cha c h a bu b u Duo, D U O. Cha bu duo, cha bu duo. It's not yeah. one word. It's cha bu duo. Yeah, it's three, three characters. By the way, for those of you who didn't uh, join us from the beginning, the background today is not mainland China. This is Taiwan. 
and it was sent by our good friend Lewis YGZ. Just want to give him a shout out. Um, we thought we'd show you something different, and we're going to mix it up a bit. Next week, we're going to have some fresh new uh, mainland China footage for you, but... We you don't know, say mainland, just China. Yeah, just China. Yeah, because that implies Taiwan's part of China. No, it's not. Yeah. Taiwan is its own country. We'll okay? have China footage. Yeah, we'll yeah. have China footage next week, some new China footage for you, but we've got some Taiwan footage for you today. Correct. Cool. Are we going to move Why on? Why do people keep saying I'm drunk? I don't know. Are, are you? you? No. <laughs> Unless you count Mountain Dew Zero Sugar Major Melon as alcoholic. Uh, JM says, Hi. I feel like you should be playing Call of Duty or something. Yeah, that's such a Call of Duty, like <laughs> yeah. freaking Doritos ass drink. drinking. Yeah. JM, I finally get to join you for a live stream. I've been watching Winston since the early days of China How It Is. Excellent. Thank I you. loved both of your Ch Conquering China documentaries. Have a beer on me and stay awesome. Thank you, Jane. Thanks, mate. Really appreciate it. Milky Chances beer. Everyone must watch Serpent ZA's China's Done. Yeah, yeah. that's my video from today. Thank you. It's I, doing very well. I appreciate well. it. Thank you. Uh, JD says Citizen Journalist. Yes. Power mm -hmm. Shift says Ryan's Thoughts. And that's Xi Jinping's <laughs> Xi Jinping's name. Thoughts, yeah. Uh, Ryan's Thoughts says Bankrupt my own country, kill millions every year through floods, Wuhan virus, and genocide set China back 100 years and cause a revolution. Can I just read something right now? Sure. This is from the Global Times. Okay. The Global Times put this out. This is Chinese state media. Yeah. Xi Jinping thought is added into the curriculum now for all schools in China. It says right. primary schools will focus on cultivating love for the country the Communist Party of China and socialism. So that's what primary schools are going to focus on, okay? Love for the country, love for the Communist Party of China, and love for socialism. Great. That's what you want your kids to learn. In middle school, the focus will be on a combination of perceptual experience and knowledge study to help students form basic political judgments and opinions. Okay, so now we're going to force political judgments and opinions on our children in middle school. In college, or sorry, high school, in college... There will be more emphasis on the establishment of theoretical thinking. Studying Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era is the primary political task of the Communist Party of China and of the country. So the primary Sounds task awesome, is to force Xi Jinping thought on the entire student population, the entire youth. This is not going to end well. Mao 2.0, I've been saying that for a while. Yeah, I just wanted to read that. It's really bad. Uh, the way things are going now with education in China, it is it is just awful. It's literally 1984, thought police type stuff. You may only have one political opinion. You may only love the country, the Communist Party and socialism and, you know, Marxist socialism with Chinese characteristics, whatever the hell that's supposed to mean, sounds, whatever they want it to be. Sounds fun. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to put that out there. No, I, that's, we, that's good. Are insight. we moving on? Um, sure. Okay. We're going to go on to Wu Mao Corner, and we're going to, this is where we talk about like what the haters are doing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But this time, okay, we were sent a, a tweet. Sorry, we were sent a tweet today, and this is something that we really wanted to talk about because this whole ramp up in nationalism that you see, it's not just something that affects China and people in China. It affects the Chinese diaspora around the world because all of this stuff, you don't, I mean... We know because we have Chinese spouses and Chinese friends who live here. The majority of Chinese people that live in the States or uh, abroad are still connected to mainland China in more ways than you know. Okay, They get all their news through WeChat or through Xinhua, whatever it is, through their different devices. All the TV shows and everything they watch are still Chinese I gotta, shows. I'm going to blow my nose. Okay, you go blow your nose. I'll continue. So it's running off for some damn thing. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, please don't be gross. Um, all the TV shows, all the news are coming at them from mainland China. So when you open up WeChat, it complains about how America is bullying China, how the Wuhan flu came from Fort Detrick or whatever it is. That's all they're reading all day. So even though they are now in a different country, they still have the exact same um, influence from the government. And you see this spilling over into daily life in uh, America, in Australia, in Canada, any of these places... You see people that are emboldened by nationalism, Chinese nationalism, the diaspora, who go out and do criminal things, criminal acts, because they feel like they're entitled to. Like when they rip down the protesters' Lenin walls and things, you know, if there's a, a Hong Kong freedom of expression protest, they go and take photos of them and spy on them and cause trouble and wreck their thing, or they go and try to force universities and stuff to not have the Dalai Lama attend or whatever. But it's getting worse and worse and worse. And this tweet that we were sent this morning um, is actually 
pretty damning. I actually want Seamilk to come back um, before I play it. He's taking a long time to blow his nose. I wonder if he's doing something else. Weirdo. Um, let's take a look. Uh, while I'm waiting for him, I'll answer a super chat over here. Okay, they say, from Tacit Turn. Most people only talk about Xinjiang because it's the most commonly known location in a vast network. Xizang and Inner Mongolia also have locations. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway, you're back. I'm back. Didn't let's, want to be gross and blow my nose in front of no, everyone. I'm glad you didn't, but let's, uh, let's uh, play this little clip and then we'll give a loose translation <coughs> of what's going on. So everybody, uh, we were just sent this tweet, okay? I'm sick, by the way. Oh, maybe people think I'm drunk because I took Dayquil. Oh, right. Cold, cold medicine. You got Dayquil, yeah. All right, let's take a look, shall we? Everyone, let's... <laughs> Why is it sped up? Why is it sped up? <laughs> it makes it more fun. <laughs> it doesn't okay. really matter. Either. Okay, I mean, right. We, we, we can translate it for you anyway. But this is now, sta- this is like outside the White House, okay? Mm. Washington, D.C. Um, and what you've got here, let's set up the scene for those of you at home. You've got what <laughs> looks like an Uncle Gumbe, but he's actually not. See this kind of burly guy over there? Yeah. Right? He's uh, set up a sign over there. We'll show you what the sign says in a minute, right? And you can see there's a woman here with her, I, I guess, her boyfriend or, or husband. husband or <laughs> what, we, we don't yeah, know. With yeah, her. She's with some, some, some guy dude. There. And she's going crazy, screaming and shouting at him, okay? And threatening mm-hmm. him, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> Having a massive argument. <laughs> and then, actually, the... Not uh, not just the police, but the Secret Service, because he's got a Secret Service badge on his vest there. Who? The guy on the bicycle. Oh. Because, you know, secrets, Oh, yeah, of course. The Secret Service love to cycle around, of you know, course. get a little bit of fitness here and there. It's because it's around the White House. Yeah, of course. <laughs> he actually has to come and tell it. Why is it playing at, like, some ridiculous speed? How did this I mess know, it up? It doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, it would be nice if you could hear it. Um, but he basically says, look, that's his opinion, you know... <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to have to um, accept the fact that he has an opinion. And then she, she says, but he's Chinese, and you know, that kind of thing. The, yeah, he, he placates them. He calms them down. Yeah. Yeah. So these are Chinese people having a protest against the CCP. Well, let's look at the sign. We actually get the sign here. <laughs> They're just screaming and shouting at each other. So this guy, what his sign said is, CCP maliciously released coronavirus. No question about it. The U.S. <laughs> must military destroy the CCP. <laughs> okay. Ooh, coming in a little hot there, buddy. Okay, and then, of course, it's written in uh, Chinese, Chinese yeah. as well. Okay. So you have to understand that for um, most, most Chinese people, you may never speak up against the CCP. Okay? You cannot say this kind of thing. If you try to say something like this in public in China, you'll be arrested. You'll be taken away. You're not allowed to do this. And it's a shock. It's a massive, massive shock to most Chinese people to see a Chinese person say something like this. And if you listen to the conversation, that's what she's saying. Especially if if they're new arrivals. Because there's thousands and thousands of Chinese dissidents in America. But when you come here and you're like, oh, you're also a Chinese. And they're like, yeah, I hate the CCP. They're like, what are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. So basically what she was shouting at him and saying is, you're Chinese, how dare you say this kind of thing, you know? And they got right. into a big argument. He was like, it is the CCP did this and that. And she's like, how dare you, blah, 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 blah. So this ties into this whole ramp up of nationalism. It affects the diaspora so much that they feel entitled to go and attack people that are protesting or attack people that have an opinion overseas that doesn't match the Chinese government's opinion. So that's why we wanted to show this to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And props, I mean, props to people having their own opinion and being able to stand I, up for themselves. I got to be honest, when I saw that guy, the guy who's actually protesting, I thought he was a CCP guy because he looks like a Uncle Gumbe, you know? Yeah, what I mean? like a, yeah, someone that would be a nationalist yeah. in China. Looks are deceiving, yeah. you know? So he's actually on the good side. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, he's maybe a little extreme. He's a bit weird. A little extreme. Yeah. We shouldn't call for war or military, anything no. really, but at the same time, we should hold the CCP accountable for its Abs- bad actions. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, it just shows you that um, 
uh, this nationalism is so ridiculous that even on foreign shores they will attack people who have a differing opinion to the the um, CCP. No, that's the reason we showed this to you. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's take up uh, some super chats before we get onto worldview. What do you say? Yeah, Daniel Ortman says. Is, son of a, sorry. Yeah. Daniel Ortman says, "Is the CCP worried that invading Taiwan could be a winter war situation for them?" Yes. Mm -hmm. That was when Finland fought the USSR to a draw. I actually had some jokes. You did? I had some jokes about, some, for some bizarre reason, I had some jokes um, about Finland. Oh, no, I, I heard one the other day. Oh, you did? Uh, it's a, I got to remember this. This is good. Because I, I love the Winter War story. You know about the Winter War story, right? No, I don't. Oh, you don't? I'm not that Finland. Good Finland had, like, no soldiers. And they were right. like, fuck this. The Soviet Union is invading them. Yeah. So they, like, held off the Soviet Union with, like, almost no one. They were, like, on skis and shit. Like, oh, sniping right, 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 right. Yes. Soviets. There was, so the joke was, like, um, let me look it up. Just so I don't screw it up. I always thought it's like you don't invade Russia in winter because Napoleon found that out. And so did Hitler. Right. No, no. This is the Finland Winter War uh, okay. joke is, is it's good. It's so good. It's so good. The six oh, yeah, yeah, plus best Winter War jokes. <laughs> the hell? <laughs> this one. Okay. So okay. a Soviet army is marching through a Finnish forest when a general hears a voice from over a hill shout, one Finnish soldier is better than 10 Soviet, Soviet soldiers. Mm -hmm. right? The general promptly sends 10 soldiers to go root out the voice. There's gunfire and then silence. So the idea was back then they were just sending basically Soviets into the meat grinder because they had so yeah. many men. They did that a lot in World <laughs> a War II, too, yeah. After a few minutes, the voice shouts defiantly, one Finnish soldier is better than a hundred Soviet soldiers. And the general sends a hundred men to remove the nuisance. There's a racket of gunfire and then quiet. One vo the voice cries out loudly once more, one Finnish soldier is better than a thousand Soviet soldiers. Enraged, the general sends a thousand men charging over the hilltop to shut up that voice once. Once and for all, and an epic battle rages and then quiet. After a few minutes, a gravely wounded Soviet crawls back over the cr hill and cries, It's a trap! There are two Finnish soldiers. It's <laughs> <Yeah, that's, laughs> pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, pretty good. Yeah, so anyway, it could be... No, Taiwan could absolutely be a similar situation because yeah. they're so well kitted out in Taiwan for an invasion. And, yeah, and they have uh, you know the support of the international community. Mm. Right. You know, as much as everyone adheres to the so-called One China policy... They're still going to defend Taiwan. Taiwan right. is not something that they want to see uh, mainland China overtake. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Hanamaru Alice, Alice says, Hey, Winston and Matt avail are finally able to catch the show from the start. Yeah. Uh, just curious, if the Estonian music group Cartoon gave you permissions to make an alternative music video using Chinese B-roll clips, would you do it? Much love. Yeah, of yeah, course. Absolutely. absolutely. We, we love, love their music. Obviously, it's our theme mm. song. We've been using it for years now. Yeah, yeah. Awesome um, group. And we love Estonia because they've done a pretty good job standing up to the CCP yes, as well. Yes, Estonia is awesome. So, Tom Christopoulos says, I lived in Shenzhen area, first by Mission Hills and then by Happy Valley right. in 2001 to 2005. Good old days. Nice. So you left just when I arrived. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A. Watson, I can just imagine the travel agency in Xinjiang, foreigners arriving. Quick, get the old guy on it, boss. Yeah, exactly. Get the old guy. Same yeah. old guy. You can't make this crap up. And that's no. why it's so easy to poke holes in Chinese propaganda because it's yeah. so bad. It's so cha buduo. And they, they hire these ridiculous foreigners. Yeah. You know, they go around doing these stupid we, things. Oh, oh, we've decided we, we're not going to like pinpoint anyone because like people yeah. are going to do what they're going to do. Yeah, but, we don't like to attack individuals, but we can attack a group. I mean, not attack. We just pin, no, you know, point no, out there. That, seriously, yeah. they deserve they deserve to be attacked as a group of horrible people. They're working. rhetoric attacked, by the yeah, way. Yeah, obviously not physical. Not with like but, Finnish know, soldiers. No, not with Finnish soldiers because they'd finish them. Um, <laughs> no, seriously, they, they are a terrible gr group of people that are willfully doing mm. um, propaganda, mm. you know, to the detriment of actual Xinjiang people, local people, and Chinese yeah. people. Yeah. They do this propaganda because it makes them feel like they're famous. They do this propaganda because they get paid to go on these trips and they think they're something special. And it is to the detriment of the local people. And that's the disgusting thing. And that's why they deserve a bit of fuck every once in a while. You know? Yeah, for sure. But anyway, I, wanna, I wanted to uh, bring up one of them that cracked us up today when you were taking screenshots. Oh, the Velvety Coffee guy? I've, should we do it next time? Yeah, we'll do it next okay. time. It, it's too, the meme potential is too good. It's too good, yeah. I mean, he put himself out there. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> Seth Wilson. Uh, finally, I have to... Oh, sorry. 
Oh yeah. Uh, from merely a aesthetic perspective, which banknotes uh, look the best? China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, U.S. or South Africa? Hong Kong, hands down. Definitely not U.S. Hong Chi- Kong's China used to be China used to be awesome. Yeah. And then they and then put it's Mao just got over like them. Mao, that fetid dictator. Hong Kong is fantastic. The ten Hong Kong dollar thing with that see-through thing, and it's all like those purple That's colors. Sick. No, it's but then really cool. the th- the interesting thing about Hong Kong is it's not the government that uh, releases the banknotes, but the banks, the banks do yeah. inter- individually. So you get different banknotes. Different notes. Notes, yeah. So like a ten, I mean like a whatever fifty dollar note, Hong Kong dollar note will be different. Yeah, I mean it's all tied to the U.S. dollar. Yeah, but, yeah. but they've got beautiful designs of dragons lions and, li- and you know like yeah. traditional lines. It looks definitely fan- has definitely Hong Kong definitely fantastic. Has money. South African money is like going to safari mixed with Nelson Mandela. Yeah. It's so like I, it's, it's like a safari that Nelson Mandela has visited. I guess <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> Taiwan's like, Taiwan's mm. thousand NT note is is really charming. It's like a bunch of kids playing baseball. Yeah, it's really yeah. nice. That's that's cool. I mean, and then they've got the Shao Yo, yeah. whatever. They got them all like studying science or whatever. The Taiwanese is okay. It's nice. It's charming. But Hong Kong for sure. Absolutely. Chinese money is boring and gross. It used to be awesome. Yeah, it all looks the same on the one side. On the other side, they've got nice pictures of. It used to have things. each minority. Yeah, but I mean, look. The, the Mao side is what I'm saying is boring. Yeah, yeah, she absolutely. wants to look they at a change that. fat, gross old dictator. Right. On the other side, Those it's are got, okay. yeah, you've yeah. got like the Yang Shuo yeah. things on the 20. Yeah. You've got the, the whatever, the Summer Lake. Or you've got all these different things. There's some cool stuff on the back there of the is, notes. There is, yeah. I like that. Yeah. My butt has teeth says, have you heard of the business Chinese tea? They make anti-CCP goods like hoodies and masks. Their ad came up for me. Uh, yeah, I've seen them pop up before, yeah. yeah. DJ, spying doesn't only go one way. Y'all think the abrupt evac from Afghanistan is due to the USA knowing something big is going to happen? No, I don't mm. think so. John Cruthers, thank you for being a member. Uh, Ozy Baby says, I love both your main channels, but this podcast is on a whole nother level. I really enjoy it. Keep up your charismatic duo. We, we like it the best too because it's yeah. fun. And we get to interact with you guys. That's the most yeah. important thing. We're having a conversation and it's, an, it's a very important one. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, sound, you reminded me of that, uh, that freaking, <laughs> what is that? I don't know. What are you going on? About uh, the what's his name? That country singer. What's that country singer that joined Facebook that one time? Uh, I don't Garth know. Garth Brooks. Oh, Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks, and he joins Facebook, and he's like, I guess his like his secretary told him to join Facebook, so he puts up this little video, and he's like, I'm just so happy to be here, guys, on Facebook, and this is like a conversation. I'll be posting cool stuff and funny stuff, so let's get this conversation going. Yeah, well, I think we're in a different... This is a real conversation. No. <laughs> Garth Brooks, dude. Look it up. It's hilarious. All right, cool. Uh, Subdarshi Sengupta, how do you guys think the PRC would be different today if she never deleted term limits or who or Jiang became chairman for life instead of she? Uh, I, well, if Hu Jintao was still in power, things would probably be still opening up and things would be a, a lot better. So, uh, uh, even more so, Jiang Zemin. He was, yeah, Jiang he was Zemin. Less, uh, yeah. He was less hands-on. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kishune says, I never donated before, but you deserve it. I started watching Serpent today a while back. I'm so glad you guys talk about this. They asked me too. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, mate. Appreciate we that. appreciate that a lot. Mm-hmm. Ty Scott says... Here's some Krona from a Hawaii boy in Sweden at the moment. Oh, cool. Everyone give some love to Liberty Sculpture Park. Absolutely. Oh, we agree. Thank you. Thank you. Fried cheese macaroni ball. Oh, those are, uh, they have those at uh, Cheesecake Factory. Mm. It's pretty decadent. They're really good, pretty yeah. Pretty decadent. Yeah. Um, what were those early videos of people collapsing? You mean during the pandemic? Oh, uh, yeah. I guess people collapsing in the pandemic. Yeah. Or at least the... Uh, the pneumonia of whatever the... or, or like people um what's it called what? getting really upset about it like having panic attacks or something Raphael miller have you guys seen kraut's video on china i have no idea who that is he essentially claims that china wants nothing more than to become a hermit kingdom that only accepts silver or the modern equivalent would you agree um to a certain extent yeah but i don't know who that is and i think we've... he's referring to that kraut and tea guy Who's that? He kind of does opinion videos. Oh, okay. Sorry, mm. I don't know who that is. I don't know. Um. I haven't watched his video. I don't, I don't watch his videos. I do know who he is, though. Okay. Mm. Someone in the crowd, thank mm-hmm. you for keeping us informed about China. Happiness to you and your families. By the way, Chinese camps denials reminds me of the Soviet Empire a lot. Both They both uh, possess one creator, the KGB. Similar tricks. I would agree with you, and yeah. thank you for the rubles. 
You know, there there's that famous Nazi propaganda that came out as well about the concentration camps. What is it, Theresienstadt or something? Yeah, yeah. Um, we should show that at some point yeah. because the parallels between what they did oh, there and what these guys are doing with Xinjiang is just... It's yeah. like they learned. Yeah, they looked at that and they said, this is what we're going to do. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jonathan Kay says, in your family story, Serpent that I think it's interesting that your father had is an Israeli che- um, fish. fish and checking them saved his life. How did he get into fish keeping? Well, my father does fish breeding, mm-hmm. uh, and he he builds water features, dams, koi ponds, that kind of thing. That's his main business. And a big part of that business, of course, is being able to stock those dams. And he has a shop where he sells spe- specialized fish that he breeds. So he imports a lot of fish from Israel. I don't know why Israel's a source of that fish That is bizarre, because it's like desert country. I, but it is. Like, you get a lot of good koi from Israel. You get a what? lot of good... Yeah. You get a lot desert of good, koi? They live in the sand? No, obviously they do it properly, but Israel's a source of fish. That's so, interesting. Yeah, it's kind of. You weird. just wouldn't think that. I'm saying. No, no, you wouldn't. Yeah, because uh, it's not like koi live in the ocean. <laughs> no, you know, it's a yeah. freshwater fish. Yeah, Mary, uh, maybe sunshine. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Jonathan Lau. Hi, I wonder your thoughts on the uh, Australia New Zealand lockdowns. You seem to disapprove of them in the live last stream. Yeah, I, I disapprove of these lockdowns. Look, it's it's a horrible situation. Lockdowns are useful, but I think they can go too far you know right yeah i mean like certain certain types of lockdowns like targeted things that were going to be super spreader events yeah don't concerts. don't have a concert also right. like you know make sure that uh restaurants only have outdoor seating that kind of thing mask mandates yeah. are fine yeah but uh don't be preventing people from getting out their home and hanging out in a park or something yeah i mean that that's a bit much yeah it's it is a bit crazy we don't want to end up like china yeah. At the end of the day. We, we should probably hit our next segment before. Yeah, yeah. We sorry, continue. I'm sorry. We have yeah. another segment. Yeah, we got Worldview, guys, which where we talk about what's happening in the world specifically to do with China. So it's kinda like what's new, but it's just at the end of the show. It's interesting that our concurrent viewers goes up when we do super chats. Oh. Isn't that not weird? Hmm. Okay, anyway. that's fantastic. Yeah. We have a little graph. Do you want to explain what this graph's all about? Sure. So we have a, a beautiful rainbow. Actually, this rainbow is a very bad people. Yes. Um, but we have Mao Zedong in red. We have Liu Shaoqi, Hua Guofa. I don't need to read everyone. No, but these anyway, are just these are, leaders of China. Yes, and, and politicians. So Of the Communist Party. Of the Communist Party of China. So this is the... This is an inter- I love data like this. Mm-hmm. This is interesting. So this is the People's Daily is like the, the biggest newspaper in China, right? Yes. And on the front page, this has been around since the founding of China yeah, in 1949. Yeah. So yes. the front page is going to have the most important headlines, just like any newspaper. We mm-hmm. have New York Times, whatever, right? Yes. LA Times, yes. whatever. Um, so the front page headlines that contain the name of a leader, of a leader, right? Yes, the percentage. They put them all together. So they have archives of every issue that's ever come out yes. on a daily basis. That's got to be a large yeah, stack of newspapers. Yeah. yeah, it's a daily daily newspaper. So as you can see, if we look at Mao, I think Mao is probably the second most interesting one. So if we have Mao uh, mm-hmm. as a headline, we see that... 1970, you can yeah, see Yeah, he spiked really hardcore. And that's, I, I would say, in the six, late 60s, you know, we're talking about Cultural Revolution stuff. Um, and Great Leap Forward was pre- prior to that, but the Cultural Revolution stuff is when he really gained his massive cult of personality, when they smashed all the olds, right? Yeah, they the got four olds. The four olds. Get rid of um, Chinese history and pro- uh, sorry, history and culture. And tradition. And tradition. They hated it, right? They yeah. destroyed it. They hated, uh, I shouldn't say the Chinese people hated it, but Mao hated any sort of ancestor worship, yes. hated money, he hated uh, temples. All this kind of stuff. It was all to be smashed. And then in its place would be him. Right? Mm-hmm. So you see a lot of old propaganda. He's up in the sun. He's chilling out up there, right? Yeah, yeah they're, they're trying, trying to do an echo thing don't, again. Don't listen to I'm it. ignoring it. Um, so, well, I have someone on the inside. So I'll yeah, just let's find out if there really is an echo. We have someone on the inside. I'll, turn, I'll mute my mic just to see if it goes away. Audio is fine, so said one person. Mm-hmm. Um, Crap, I don't have an insider right now. It's okay. It can't be an echo because my mic's off, so you go. Yeah, so it's not true. I'll even do this. Okay. So anyway, um, no echo on my side. It's a small minor echo. Thank you to the members, Lawrence K. Batista. I'm going to listen to members and not the people that are lying to us. Yes. Okay, so anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh, so he smashed all that stuff. And in his place, if you look at old Chinese propaganda, don't look. If you look at old Chinese propaganda, you'll have him on this in the sun, right? He's like kind of, you know, like Teletubbies, they have that baby in the sun. Yeah. It's like Mao, right? I wish we had a picture of that. Anyway, so around the late 60s, this is the height of his like 
insane shit. Remember the the cult of the mango? Yes, I remember. He touched like a mango. No, he was given. He, he was, was given, given a mango. He was given a mango, right? It's fixed, but I like how they say uh, Winston has echo, but Seamilk doesn't. But my microphone's been awful all this time. Liars. 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 Don't look. I'm covering this up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay so no, you, the, he was he was gifted by pakistan yeah, he was mango. given given some mangoes. Of mangoes yeah and they'd never had mangoes before so he took the mangoes and he said i give these mangoes to the people and some like the yeah. little rabid like followers went around <laughs> the country. Eggs. they they encapsulate they encased mangoes in glass and embalmed them and carried them around the countryside <laughs> as this glorified gift from mao zedong mangoes look it up mao's mangoes yeah it was like a cult yeah. So anyway, the Mao's mangoes, uh, the cult that that was around this time, right? So this is the peak of his popularity. So we're yeah. talking about like every every other freaking headline is hit yes. is Mao, yeah. right? So when you look at the other leaders, no one really ever had the same sort of popularity, right? Yeah. Mao comes back. You have Mao coming back later on there, which is crazy to look at, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then you look at this other peak, and you're like, holy shit, Xi Jinping, yeah, his eclipse mao and this in mao is, is someone that's still in the headlines today he's still on the money right? he's still on the money he's still at people's houses they still have portraits of him that they pray to he's he's like the the head figure xi jinping he went he went above and beyond he it's took over double. mao he almost yeah. doubled him he, yeah so this is a very interesting to see what a real cult of personality is xi jinping is not only the most powerful person in the world but he has eclipsed mao yeah. Um, and it's in itself inflicted too. It's not, I shouldn't say inflicted, it's self made. Yes. This is not people that are being altruistic and saying, I really want to go talk about Xi Jinping. Yeah. This is mandates for state media to propel him to, to levels of Chinese propaganda. Winston and I always talk about this. This is something you won't get in other uh, uh, Chinese media or news sources. We lived in China and saw propaganda go away. Mm. We watched it under, under Hu Jintao kind of dissipate. Yeah. Um, you saw less. You actually saw a dismantling of hammer and sickles. It became yeah. a point where communist insignia was there when I when I went in 2008 and started to dwindle until like 2015. Yeah. It was being taken down to the it point was. where I was like, "Wow, this is." I'm not really in this like oppressive state anymore. It didn't look well, like. I remember it there was a building down the road from me, which the whole side of the building was a one child. Po policy right. propaganda right. that they painted on they there. painted over yeah they and started they, yeah, they painted stuff. over it yeah. yeah they got rid of this stuff yeah and it was weird it was almost like the the staggering crazy photos i was sending back home be like look at it there's these hammer and sickles it's weird you know mm. uh it looks like the soviet union that stuff went away and i couldn't take photos like that anymore it started to look fairly normal yeah it came back so hardcore that you saw the the old textbook mao stuff in the sun yeah. literally be xi jinping now yeah and it's now like that right it's i'd say it's getting to the level of of mao um cult of personality yeah in, in china and Absolutely. it's and it's him doing so yeah um so anyway mm -hmm. yeah you notice when i cover it up and stop talking about it yeah the echo islands have been china since ancient times <laughs> <laughs> so anyway yeah. uh, we didn't cool. lose viewers so the echo's not bad yeah, all right. And um, we just wanted to show that, uh, again, you can actually see the rising sun flag on the Japanese uh, naval boat there. Mm -hmm. So just so you know, it is still something that's used today. And it's not seen as controversial as it is in China. Oh, uh, go back to that graph. World. I wanted to make a correction. Oh, you want to make a correction? Yeah, just because like, you can't see it very well because we're covering ourselves. Oh, I can get us out of there. Yeah, thank you. That shade uh, that we are covering, that shade of red is actually Hu Jintao in the headlines. Yeah, that's not, that's not Mao Zedong. So Mao is back in the, the late 60s. That is Mao back there. Yeah. The, that 2000s one, that's Hu Jintao's rise to power. Yeah. Um, you can actually notice he was, again, didn't you notice this, but Jiang Zemin, is, he was much less talked about than Hu Jintao even. Yeah. And it just gradually got back to that where it's like, oh, we're now we're in cult of personality land with Xi Jinping. Absolutely. Anyway. All right, so it's time for us to move on to our questions and answers, guys, where uh, we answer your questions and you question our answers. So what have we got for everyone today? Uh, Weebrat94 says, hello, it's your old pal Glee Garrett from Jolly Old England. I moved to China because the birds here tighten me up Jolly Roger. But I ended up being forced to push propaganda instead. I want out. SOS. Nice. We know you. Lee Garrett. To. Yeah. <laughs> Garrett. I like it. The birds. You know what? Oh, we noticed this is something we, we were chuckling about. Mm. Um, 
we were going on just to get screenshots. We we couldn't believe when someone told us they're like, look, and you're going to see the same old man. The old man's everywhere. So we noticed on some of these propaganda channels that yeah. there were literally videos called, what were they called? Like, I woke up this morning and saw birds. Heard yeah. and saw birds. Heard and saw birds in China. <laughs> these people are so desperate that they're out searching for actual birds. And when, we said there's when no they birds finally come across a bird, they have to document it and put it online as proof. It shows you how rare it is to come across actual... It, it's not like that. Like, it's like we heard birds. We're trolling people and yeah. we actually wasted their time to it's go out great. and look for birds. For those of you who can't remember the old man, I'm just going to put him in the background. They're the same old man that's used in all the Xinjiang propaganda. It he's is been carving unless guy. he's unless he has multiple twins. No, it's the same dude. That's, you can tell. I, I know. I know. Yeah. Fancy a trip to the ancient city of Kashgar? You'll meet the old man. The old man. The one old Uyghur man that's paraded in front I love of that, everyone. I love that he is used as like the authentic interaction. Yeah. I'm surprised that what's her name. Uh, What's her name? Didn't say no stone left unturned girl. Yeah. yeah. What's her name? Kate, Kate Quay. Quay. I'm surprised, surprised she didn't interview him. Yeah, maybe she did. Is there any genocide here in Xinjiang? And he's just like, you yeah, know, he's just a, and he does a little dance. He's a piece of dancing furniture is all he is for them. For them, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, John Sheena says, you made this podcast just in time for the collapse. What is the collapse? That's scary. John W. says, this guy looks like sea milk. Thank you very much. Thank Mannerheim, uh, just back from Portugal in time for the stream. Nice. Welcome Excellent. back. Mm. Zero Fun says, uh, New Zealand has been going into... What? Wartime measures. ZN? War, I, I, I'm assuming he meant NZ. Okay. Um, unless Z, ZN is a different country. Oh, see. It's going into wartime measures in various provinces, despite celebrating that they've already uh, beaten the virus with harsher shopping restrictions. Is that because they're running out of food? Oh, is it, what is China ZN? China, maybe? Zhongguo? No. Maybe he means Zhong. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Anyway, maybe you mean China. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Pie burn. Sea milk will come so hard for period dramas. <laughs> let's not bring that back. No, guys. let's not bring it back. That did make it into the... Um, oh, I should have should have thrown in. Oh, I don't need to. I said it in live. You guys, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Nebros looks like cancel culture permeates well beyond the US. That's much more in China, my friend. Mm. People like to pinpoint the u.s all the time like oh it's a doomed country you, you have no idea no in china you if you're a celebrity you have to walk around on eggshells any misstep in your career will literally be erased yes like this poor guy who had all his scenes cut out of all of his tv what shows he did 10 he years took ago. a picture in front of a tree i know it's like come on yeah uh except in china he says it's propagated by the ccp cultural revolution mm -hmm. too that's right Mark Davies says, get up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ty Scott says, well, I didn't realize the exchange rate. I hope those silver bullets are as blue as the send button. Well, <laughs> thank, thank you, you so you very much. much. PB says, my solemn represent <laughs> representation to you too. <laughs> Please, someone make a meme out of sol solemn representations I'm sure from so Jolly Jim. Somebody will. Somebody, somebody will. will. Please cosplay as characters in a Chinese period drama. Add some whoosh whoosh flying sound effects as well. It's too much work. <laughs> All but, that I mean, flowing robes and long intricate I wouldn't be able to fit in any of those. Nope. I feel like they're quite small, and they're also for women. <laughs> no, oh, I those mean, men dudes, men, yeah. The men, it's the same. Grow their hair. They actually wear very similar types of clothes. Do, I guess yeah. it's just the style, yeah. Jordan Thomas, can you explain what all of your channel names mean? Sure. Yeah, and you asked nicely. AD, what, ADV China is Adventure. ADV yeah. stands for Adventure China. Uh, Serpent ZA, my... Um, that was basically my online alias handle back in the day. ZA is the country code for South Africa. Serpent means a snake. I grew up with snakes. My dad owned snake parks and all that kind of thing. Serpent ZA, what about yours? Laowai means foreigner in Chinese, mm -hmm. uh, but I changed it to WHY because I answer people's questions about China. Mm -hmm. 86 is because that's a country code for China. Mm -hmm. uh, Tacit turn. The yuan is falsely valued. Both the World Bank an international monetary fund. Isn't it? I thought it was like the year you were born. Or it's just... Well, it's country code of China is cooler than that. Yeah, I suppose so. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's plus eight, six when you want to dial yeah, a Chinese that's, phone that's number. Yeah, that's very true. Okay. I'm, well, you, I learned something yeah. new. You learned something new today. Yeah, ADV podcast is adventure podcast because you see we have these fantastic adventures here. Yeah. You know, can't you tell? We're all on, on a, an amazing adventure. <laughs> Speaking of adventures, um, let's look at our picture thing here we've got to add that we were going to talk about a few oh, things oh yeah this is it. okay yeah i was wondering why we we hadn't covered that so 
This has been going around in some podcasts I watch. Uh, specifically, okay. it was on H3 podcast. So they were doing with all their uh, the staff and their thing. They did like uh, predictions for their personalities. Mm -hmm. And so you guys might know this. It's like some whatever more Myers Briggs personality thing. But anyway, it's like a real psychology thing. And you take uh, uh, some questions, and then you get one of sixteen different personalities. I like to look at it like some sort of RPG class, you know. Okay. But anyway. Um, I took it first, mm -hmm. and I, I learned about myself, and then I was like, well, what if Winston takes it? Let's see, like, what, if we're differing personalities, you know, you get one of 16 different, very wildly yeah. different personalities, um, but not only, not only did we get the same personality, ISFP, which is adventure, but a. we even got the extra A, which is assertive, right? Okay. So we literally... Uh, yeah, we, I didn't tell you what I no, got. No, 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 no. He just said, take this you test. To I got it, that. and he was like, that's the same as I got. It's kind Identical. Of I had it in my notes. I showed yeah, it to you. Yeah, yeah. Right? So actually, we found out that we are uh, adventurers. And I, I thought it would be interesting if you guys took that test. You guys can see what you guys are. Yeah, see, see if there's any. Post it on the subreddit. Yeah. Um, totally open to you guys. What's it called? The Briggs results. and Stratton? Well, the website's actually called 16 Personalities. Okay. So the number one six. Okay. I'm um, not a sponsor. It's totally free. Sure. sure. Um, but anyway, it's really interesting because it breaks down like what you are and who. And we were interested to find out actually that we're introverts. You might think that we're extroverts. But the thing about the adventurer personality is you appear extroverted, but actually you're not, right? Okay. You analyze things a lot. And we do. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. another very... And now I know why the speed... Because every time I press minus for the to change the um, pictures, it's messing with the speed on VLC. That's why it was playing at a fast speed like earlier. Happened? Because I'm pressing the plus and minus to move through the pictures, it messes with the speed. Anyway, why don't you show what these? This is this is. Uh, we're very communist in our awards because this is your guys' award too. Yeah, absolutely. You made it happen. Uh, we got our one hundred thousand uh, subscriber play button for and ADV podcast. You guys and look at our name. We are. We have a little verification, and it's we're all tech. thanks to you guys. Thank you very much. You made this happen. You right there watching us now. Thank you so much. Um, it's it's humbling and it's fantastic to be able to reach this level. Yeah, and uh, like it, this hopefully will help some of the shit we were going through earlier mm. um, with some of the copyright takedowns for absolute nonsense. Sure. We didn't get a whole lot of fight because we weren't a verified account. Also, hopefully this hasn't happened yet, but this isn't this has opened up memberships. But um, most yeah. importantly, before we weren't able to say if our video was safe or not for monetization. Yeah. So we would have to do like a manual review and it would take days. Yeah. So we lose all the revenue for the, 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 the episode sure. and then maybe it would be approved. So hopefully now they'll open up the ability for us to say, this is okay for this reason. This is not okay for this reason. Absolutely. Hopefully. Thank you so much, guys. Really, yeah. you're, you're the reason this happened. Anyway, let's get back to uh, the uh, question, shall we? Return, return to Orc Monkey. Um, says mm -hmm. instructions not clear went to pick up tampons from walmart entered solemn representation with the people of walmart nation <laughs> this is fantastic yep I that's like that. you've already made memes out of this episode fantastic that that's yeah. that's great the people of walmart nation is absolutely a communist nation of capitalism though it is it's communist though because they only are allowed to consume walmart products that's right right there we go uh, Subtarshi Sengupta, do you guys think she is shutting off China and banning Western education will create another lost generation? Absolutely. That's happening yeah. right under our nose. It's it's unfortunate because the people our age in China are very reasonable and, and I'd say fairly well balanced because they didn't have to put up with the brainwashing of their parents. And Correct. they grew up when China was opening up. They watched, you know, a lot of Western media, a lot of other Asian media, like from Japan and from uh, Taiwan and Hong Kong and places like that. So they grew up fairly well balanced with a, a good idea of what's going on. But the current generation growing up right now in China, and I'd say even, you know, kids that are sort of early teenagers already, like 10, 11, 12, they have been fed this nationalist bullshit. And everything's been blocked and cut off for so long that they're just growing up in the image of Xi Jinping and his ideas of what he wants people to think and say. And it's a scary situation because that's the future of China. A bunch of people who think China is the center of the universe. The rest of the world is trying to bully China always. And China is the best at everything. And China deserves everything. And the rest of the world sucks and is an enemy. You know, it's right. pretty bad. Yeah. Good so point. I really don't like where it's going. No, no, absolutely. Uh, Common Cure says, thoughts on the game Black Myth Wukong? Do you think it'll become the gateway for the West to become more appreciative of Chinese mythology? Mm, probably not. 
Yeah. You need a lot more soft power than that. Um, and again, I haven't played it. So yeah, is it out yet? We saw the, the Yeah, but preview. is it out yet? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I'll also, the, the, the Journey to the West Monkey King thing has been, you know, it's been in popular culture for a long time, not yeah. just in China. Yeah. Don't forget, you've Japan, Japan is has, very popular. You know, yeah. it's very popular. And in Taiwan, you know, a different country from China, you know. I didn't Kong. know. I played this game back in like PlayStation era. It was called Sayuki Journey West. It was like mm. a RTS RPG. Yeah. And it was a Japanese game, but I had no idea that it was it's a Journey West. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to play some beat 'em up game which had uh, okay. the three characters, Jubajie and you know yeah. uh whatever soul kong and all that so it's the, the monkey king and you got this pig you, you probably recognize there's a pig guy who used to be a handsome guy and he got transformed into a pig because he was you know a lech and he used to yeah. you know, play around with women he was a playboy so he got turned yeah. into a pig as punishment and a priest um, and they all go on this journey to the west to get buddhist scrolls from india and it's all about all the trials and tribulations they face along the way all these demons trying to trick them and fairies trying to do this and that it's actually very entertaining and they have a cartoon of it and they've got a live action version of it in china in the from the 70s or whatever and uh the stories are great you know i think it's actually pretty cool but it's pretty much the only chinese myth or story that endured you know yeah it's kind of weird eh? yeah it's the only one that kids gr- had to grow up with really in the 70s and the wasn't story. dragon ball z about that uh, I actually didn't watch Dragon Ball. Neither did I. Mm-hmm. Like I watched like two episodes, and I yeah. thought I actually preferred Sailor Moon. I'm not even joking. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was more interesting. <laughs> hey, don't you dare! <laughs> okay, that's don't fine. be don't don't even pretend. <laughs> okay. Sailor Moon is you know. I didn't watch that. Evil, I'm just too old for that. Life. You know. Are you? It came yes. out like '89. Yeah, but I mean, I, that's a that's a girl's anime, you know. <laughs> so that's what you actually meant. Yeah. Not that you're too old. They meant that you're too male. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I watched meant. like Tenchi Muyo instead. I, I watched like Tenchi Muyo as well. My okay. point is, mm. I said I would rather watch Sailor Moon than okay. Dragon Ball Z because all my friends were hyped up about Dragon Ball yeah. Z. And s- secretly, so I would be on and I'd like whatever i'd like not pay attention to it and then sailor moon sailor moon would be after i'd actually watch that and pay attention to it <laughs> okay that's good did you have the poster on your pretty, wall no my, my was, wife, there, my wife like a secret my wife had like sailor moon t-shirts and so stuff when my, she was like a my kid. wife my wife always say she was obsessed with sailor moon she always sings the but the cantonese version yeah because i mean you know my wife's a cantonese i was came through hong kong so it was broadcast in mainland china during their youth which only is in guangdong yeah Anyway, yeah. it's, uh, well, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, let's continue. Yeah, it's, 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 um, it's, anyway, I always thought Dragon Ball Z, and this is no hate, but I always thought Dragon Ball Z was like the most ADD thing in the world. It's like... I'm not very um, well-versed in You Dragon know Ball what it is. I know you what know, it is. And but... You had a freaking anime magazine. You're yeah, over here pretending but... like you're cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Dragon Ball Z is mainstream, bro. <laughs> oh, so you're trying to be an anime hipster. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hell yeah. Tenshi Muyo is very mainstream. I like that yeah, show. That was yeah. a great show. I wonder if it holds up. Probably not. Winston and I are like kind of weebs. I just want yeah, you to guys know that. Yeah. In a way. Yeah, we've been um, known to dabble. Tacit turn. Guangxi, Guangxi is enforced by Lao Gai. Okay. Jay Park says it's irony how these two Chinese uh, celebrities get canceled for something so innocent, but China still idolizes Mao that killed exp- exponentially more Chinese than the Imperial Japanese Army. Yes. Isn't that ironic? And that is the truth. And Don't I'm you think? I'm going to say that one more time. Mao Zedong is responsible for more deaths through starvation and just horrible purges and, and whatnot than the Imperial Army is responsible for deaths of Chinese people. So Ma- Mr. Mao, who's on the money, is worse than the, the Imperial Japanese Army when it comes to killing Chinese people. It's a little too ironic. Yeah. I really do think. <laughs> That's okay. a jagged little pill to swallow. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. Um, mm. yeah, that was my first CD, by the mine way. It was mine, too. Oh, yeah. We talked about yeah, this. I bought it Winston in London. and I had the first, our first CD. You know what I did? Do you know those? Uh, do you guys Actually, have mine, those? mine was that's the first one I ever bought. My first CD was the Cranberries oh, CD. Okay. I traded like first some, one I bought. Yeah, some some dude like I traded him, traded him a motorbike or something for a. No, it was like a crap one for a CD and a set of speakers. Oh, okay, it was like. A, but did the motorcycle work? Not not really. Kind oh, of. Kind, kind of. of. Okay, that yeah. seems like a very bad trade. No, no. Okay. Wasn't. Okay. Fair enough. Well, Cranberries were cool back then. You know, back then there's. Zombie. 
Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, uh, there was this thing called Columbia House, mm-hmm. and they would send you. They'd have like a, like a ad in a magazine, mm. and they'd have every list of like new CD, right, or even old CDs back when they were new, and you could sign up for free. Right. But then they send you a bill later on. Oh. And I, mom and dad, if you're watching this, I <laughs> deeply apologize, but I don't know how they dealt with this, or maybe I billed it to my grandma or something. I can't remember. <laughs> That's even worse. But I got uh, yeah. Alanis Morissette's Jaggy Little Bill. That was my first CD. I bought it in a and Hootie and the Blowfish. Hootie and the Blowfish. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, That's some nineties nonsense over yeah. there. Yeah, I bought mine in the Virgin Mega Store. Oh, uh, okay. You know, Those London. are sick. Remember yeah. back when you could? I don't know if you guys had this, but in our Virgin Mega Store up in Rochester used to go. You could burn a CD. You could pick which songs you want to go on it. Yeah. And then you could actually burn it and take it home. That's cool. No, I, I went to London. We didn't oh, have okay. them in South Africa. I was in London when I bought it. Yeah. I gotcha. It's interesting. Anyway. Anyway, let's continue on. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Hmm. Uh, Anthony Saints. Hey, hope you guys are good. Here's some support. Thank you so much. Uh, PB says, wouldn't criminalizing superstition invalidate TCM? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, it would. Uh, yes, it would. That's a very good point. Hmm. Uh, H. Ria says, uh, about ZZH, not sure if true, oh, Zhang Jahan, mm-hmm. but one of his early films got dug up and edited to make his character look like a Nazi greeting or something. Uh, oh. Interesting. Norman Fair says, poor shills. CCP will pressure them to talk about the Taliban when they eventually get kicked out and they'll be arrested for supporting terror. I feel like they will. If they haven't already, they've, yeah. they, they're going to be supporting the Taliban and saying how good it is that China should work against the evil west i think even in the west that you could say you support the taliban it's not i know illegal. but it'll really just show it'll look, true colors it'll oh yeah we're really waiting bad. we are waiting for that yeah i actually think there's it's either that or china's gonna super backtrack on the whole taliban thing because it looks really bad right yeah. now well let's hope they come out in support of it and then china backtracks and then they'll look <laughs> foolish <laughs> yeah mm. uh boycott boycott china says ccp uh, elite captured walmart walton kids Clintons and Fauci don't get it backwards. Okay. okay, boy. I think you're on the wrong website. Yeah. J Man, nice guy, 1492. Thank you for your help over the months with your dating advice. Okay. We're very happy to give it to you. Unfortunately, my Chinese girlfriend dumped me. Heartbreak feels different with yeah, a Western that, that girl. That sucks. Sorry, I man. think heartbreak is heartbreak, but yeah, yeah, we shouldn't date people based on their uh, where they're from. Yeah. And if you are going to date a Chinese girl, keep in mind there is a massive amount of cultural differences you're going to have to get past. Huge. Huge. Um, test you, can, turn. you can watch my video it's called are chinese women heartless with a question mark it's a question not a statement go watch it and you'll get some answers yeah, yeah good one mm. test turn says lab fact cgtn can remove their videos but not from those who use the Wayback machine which is basically a time machine for the internet and i implore all of you guys to use the Wayback machine on chinese media like cgtn find some gems for us to put on the subreddit because it's funny how they selectively remove stuff especially yes. in relation to uh the outbreak in wuhan yes it's kind of that's crazy. just fascinating morsels in there yeah uh dars we're all again so has been watching for years started learning mandarin should i feel bad as a poor decision no no mandarin is fantastic you know taiwan speaks mandarin yeah you know see this footage behind us you can go there speak to anyone on the street they'll understand you uh chinese diaspora around the world they'll you'll speak be able mandarin, to speak to them. them chinese people are awesome it's, it's not the a ccp is a piece yeah, of they junk. don't represent the language no, they don't no, it's uh, an ancient. Don't give that to it's them. It's an ancient language. It's been around way before the Communist Party of China. Yeah, don't give that that mm. to them. Yeah, uh, Tyler Durden three 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 three. I just found out my wife is pregnant. Congratulations! Hey, congratulations! Got man. any tips for a first time father? As always, love your videos. Um, if you're freaking out right now, I can say this: you won't be. It's awesome you'll absolutely love it get as much sleep as you can now because you're gonna have to save up on that for later i, I don't like when people yeah i get it it's a good joke i don't no, like when people make it sound so bad though because no. it's actually you'll be so happy no it's great yeah. but you do have yes. sleep y- struggles yes and you worry because you know little kids are like very fragile and you wonder, i know you you wonder how the human race actually like Exists. I wonder if it's a dad thing because like we are so, we're so overprotective of our kids, sure. especially when they're really young. Yeah, you just worry so much. Are they? Well, I mean, you can like you touch them too much on their head, and you're yeah, like, yeah, it's true. Kill it's them true. and stuff. You got to watch yeah. out. You can't leave them with blankets; they'll smother themselves to death. It's a lot of worrying crap, but you know what? It's actually easier than you think. Yeah, I was going to say, it. my tip is that you don't need to learn anything because it will come instinctually. Yeah, it's kind of natural. You're, and you'll have a great time. Yeah, it's very, very rewarding, especially when they hit about one and a half. You know what? A lot of people are worried. They're like, oh, my life will change and I'll never have this. Yes, it will. But guess what? You won't care. No, you you're don't. not going to feel regret. No, no, if no. If that's no. what you're worried about. It's, it's awesome fun. Yeah. Return to Orc Monkey. Winston, I just shared that Jackson House household bedtime joke <laughs> in my group chat with a bunch of my friends and all of them still 
started calling me a boomer. <laughs> yeah, that well, is such a boomer It's quite a joke. boomer joke, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I got some worse Michael Jackson jokes, Did, but I'm not yeah, going to say them. But no, it's okay. No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, they're pretty bad. Okay. Yeah, they're pretty bad. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Matej Schmecker says, greetings from Slovenia. Crap. Sorry. Greetings. I'm sorry. Give me a sec. This always does this. Yeah. Uh, I feel fortunate enough to live in a quiet country considering the chaos that's happening all over the world. Been watching you guys for years now. Stay awesome, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bill Wilson says, I think my cats are communists. They expect free food and keep talking about Mao. Send help. Now that's <laughs> now a that's boomer a, That's joke. a pretty good one. I <laughs> but like that's it. a it's, boomer It joke. is, but it's good. It is good. Yeah. Uh, Dion Chapman, do you think those Chinese that do the stuff for the CCP are in fact spies? No. No. That's the thing. That That's the beauty of what the Chinese Communist Party is doing is they are able to whip their their um, nationalists up, or well, the citizens up into this nationalist fervor. And that's why they brainwash them. That's why it's so important for them to learn Xi Jinping thought, you know, in schools. Imagine, because I've seen it, having taught kindergarten, middle school, high school, and then adults in China, I've seen how from a very young age, it is instilled in everybody's mind that to um, question the CCP, or to question uh, China or to criticize anything in China is almost a crime. Mm -hmm. no, it is a crime. It actually. is a crime. What do you mean almost? So when a far especially <clears throat> a foreigner, who, you've been taught your entire life that foreigners are out there to bully China and to put China down and to, you know, this kind of thing. When you see a foreigner say something like, oh, China did a bad thing. Instinctually, without even thinking about it, you will lash out defensively and attack them. And that's what China wants. That's why they're doing this brainwashing crap. And you saw it happen there with that woman with the sign where she just went completely crazy at this guy, even though he's another Chinese person. How dare you say this kind of stuff? That is outside the bloody White House in America, and she's attacking someone for saying something bad about the CCP. You see how clever and ingenious this whole brainwashing stuff is? That's what they want, because they want anyone who speaks out against the CCP, no matter where they are in the entire world, to be challenged and beaten down and silenced. And my advice is to Chinese diaspora that that don't support the CCP, that live in Western countries, speak the hell up. Yeah. Make it loud. Say it louder. As loud as louder. you can. And thank you all for supporting us because yes. we're a big target of these guys. They keep trying to shut us down yeah, all the correct. time. But you, because of you guys supporting us, we're still going strong and we will continue to do so. Return to Orc Monkey says, from the list of CGTN headlines left on the editing room floor... Ranker removes Ryan Jingping from the list of famous Ryans. Beijing considers retaliation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. for those of you new to the joke, Xi Jinping's English name is Ryan, yes. and we still can't get over that. Yeah, Ryan Xi. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. uh, Johan Collins says, has your Chinese gotten worse since you left China? Yeah, actually, uh, yeah. Yes, big time. Do you still speak with your wives and Chinese friends? I do, um, but I would say my scope of what I can talk about slowed down. It slowed down. I would say. My, I'm appalled. You know, I was on a plane the other day and, uh, you know, it was a budget flight. They didn't even have a TV to watch. They had, this, they had this lame thing where you can log in with your phone and watch things on your phone. Ooh. But nobody's prepared for that. No, no one has their earphones right. plug into like an iPhone or whatever. So no, like I couldn't watch anything with sound. Okay. What did so, you sit there and think? So no, you know, I actually um, had a piece of paper and a pen with me. So I thought I'm going to write down some Chinese characters to see how good my Chinese is. And I suck. I could barely remember anything. Right. Even my favorite characters. We can read. Yeah, I can read it and I can recognize it. But then to think about how to write it. How them, to write it, yeah. I was messing bad, up. Yeah. So I was like opening up my phone, typing in pinyin, <laughs> and then seeing the characters again and then write. My Chinese sucks now compared to what it used to. Sure. Yeah. Um, but we can understand. Yeah, I, I'm gonna, we're going to brush up. We actually made sure. a conscious decision that yeah. we're going to start practicing testing each other. Yeah. Yeah. Goes to F. Do you have any plans on visiting South Korea? Yes. Yeah, uh, I may have sure. opportunity to work there with Hyundai. Cool. What is the relationship between South Korea and the CCP? It's uh, eggshells. I'll yes. tell you that. South Korea, we, we haven't been there yet. No. But from what we know, it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Luke GP, thank you. And we're Great. going there. That's part of one of we our, are actually, our yeah. ADV China so one of our trips. top threes. Yeah. Uh, Griffin, you're out. Want to sh uh, show my support of my favorite content creators? Keep it up, guys. Thanks, mate. Kimberly, 9296. Unfortunately, I and others have been affected by the MOE change on ESL. Yeah. Sad for my students' future. Do you see a fall of the CCP in the future uh, as they have had a taste of capitalism? Love you guys. No, I do not see No, a unfortunately fall. not. And I'm sorry to hear CCP that. Will never fall. Just like I said in my video today, uh, anyone who's affected by this, I really understand what you're going through. It's awful. It's just, there's no recourse. I agree. When the CCP does something like this, 
who do you complain to? You can't go and like, you know, like in America, if there's a law passed that you don't like, you can actually go and lobby against it. Yeah. You can go to your congressman, you can go to vote, you can do things, but not in China. There's nothing. The CCP says this is the way it is. That's the way it is. And you can scream and shout all you want, but there's no recourse. You can't go to the courts <laughs> or the police. The only way the CCP will fall is, uh, what is it? Their uh, economic downturn and devastation. What's it? Devast e economic collapse and devastation. The economic collapse and devastation. What yeah. is it again? Economic collapse and devastation. Is it economic collapse and devastation? It might be devastation and economic oh, collapse. Interesting. Mm. Uh, yes, it turns. <laughs> yes, yes. Why was that such a smoking gun, by I the way? I don't know. Somebody, one of the shills out there, got very upset when I said, the only way the CCP will fall is through economic collapse and devastation. I didn't say we should do that. No, no, no. I said that was the only way it would happen. Someone made a super cut of his video, and he, it was like 10 minutes. He said like 50 yeah, times. About 10 minutes of him just saying that. What are you doing? I don't know. Dude's weird. Tess, it turns, says, just took the 43rd uh, PLA child soldiers killed in Ladakh. Just look at Arushnal Pradesh. 50K mm. Indian soldiers have just moved, been moved north. That's not good. Mm. Uh, Light Seeker. Okay. Uh, Xi Jinping's name actually Ryan? Yes. Yes. I saw this claim on Twitter. I asked Lola Farley, and he said, no, dude. No, it is. Okay. Somebody, somebody who... Um, where did I get that from? It was someone who taught... English yeah, it was in his Jinping curriculum. I mean, it, we can't a yeah. 100% confirm. It's definitely Ryan. But yeah. Think about it. His daughter goes to school overseas, okay? Right. He obviously in his youth learned English, and everyone gets to choose an English name when they, right. they're, they're of course. learning English. He yeah. chose Ryan. And he loves Saving Private Ryan. Well, whatever. He chose Apparently. Ryan. You know, um, Tommy he's Key. Ryan. It's Ryan, <laughs> Ryan Shi. Tommy Key 07 says, Chinese students would better be on, be better off taught the ramblings of a random barstool philosopher instead of Xi Jinping thought. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Luke GP, thank you. George Hazard says, I have young colleagues from high school actually talking about the Uyghur genocide now. Hmm. I think it's no longer going to take uh, take long until everyone knows that something, something actually happens for once. We hope so. Yeah. Akosha says, another great show, Winston. Uh, you can get those hydro flasks for like five bucks at Ross. It's insane that they cost so much in China. Oh, those, yeah, those that flasks? One, yeah, I know we were talking about time, how yeah. crazy expensive they are. Pope Benedict, thank you very much. You Pope can't get that one, though. That's like an actual like Japanese brand. I can't believe Pope, Pope Benedict the 16th just joined as a member. member. Wow, I'm honored. Nice. As a nice. fellow Catholic myself. <laughs> Praise be to you, Pope Benedict. <laughs> uh, Tsering Song. Do you guys think she will close China and Tibet from the rest of the world like North Korea? Uh, yeah, in a way. Uh, I'm trying to get my folks out of Tibet when they're able. I would definitely work on that. Please do. Uh, Dion Chapman, when Seamilk leaned back, it started to echo. It sounded like it was bouncing off the back wall. Oh, oh, oh but I'm back. Don't worry. Hmm. Some Seamilk ah. ASMR. Next up. I um, hate ASMR. It's the most horrible just thing. Just close your eyes. Stop. Think about just it. move on, please. <laughs> uh, Griffin, you're out. Is a member. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Janus. Evening, guys. Thanks for the great show. Oh, Giannis. Mm -hmm. Have either of you been to Chongqing? Yes. yes but only for a short time. Mm -hmm. I had Johnny. a stopover flight in there once. Johnny Azul. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Is there any Chinese music you loved in China and still listen to? Um, I used to like the... Um, what are those guys? Uh, Higher Brothers. Uh, actually, a lot of Chinese music, for sure. I like Wang Feng or whatever. Okay, yeah, and I like I listen to a lot of Taiwanese. Wang Feng is like the, the rock star of China, you know? Yeah. You know that dude? Yep. I kind of like some of his... I mean, it, you know, I suppose if you were to compare him to international stuff, it's not that spectacular, but for a Chinese artist, it's really good stuff. I, I saw him live, actually, because I went to... When I worked for Tencent, they had their year-end thing, and they actually got him in as, like... The, no one knows who you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, well. He's a big, about. like, rock he's star. In China, he's a, for he's sure. A rock, he's an actual rock star, and he's got, like, a rock star voice, and he sings kind of rocky kind of songs. Sure. And so I saw him live, and it was very cool. I filmed it, and I can't find the footage anywhere. Huh. Isn't that the worst? When you film something cool, and you want to share it, and you so can't find it? So many times I've done that. I was probably drunk and overwrote the SD card back Woman then, rolling Bouillon. around in my own puke on the floor or something. <laughs> wow. Who knows? Wow. I just i am very angry with myself. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Know what a real name says? All my recommended posts on Facebook are I, Chinese. I've never state rolled media. around in my own. No, puke, no, by the way. he doesn't do that. No. Uh, all my recommended posts on Facebook are Chinese state media. Usually propaganda against the USA for leaving Afghanistan. Can't believe it. That and you shouldn't have to be looking at that. No. Do something. Western yeah. platforms. Yeah. yeah. Pope Benedict uh, did a member upgrade in order to shout out to us. Thank you. Praise. 
and <laughs> blessings be to you, Pope Benedict. I love you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rum Runner, bad joke. Why couldn't the Tibetan nomad eat a bagel? Because he had silly yak disease. Oh, gosh. Like silly yak, like a silly, like a, you know. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> uh, Rum Runner's always coming at us with the boomer jokes. Thank yeah. you very much. Click all night. Uh, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Phil, wasn't the old man in some of your first videos uh, a guy that did propaganda vids on China was putting out on Xinjiang? Yeah, yeah. He's definitely in my video, the 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 China's oh, sure. genocide theme park video. I'm kind of proud of that video. You should check it out. Yeah, it's a good one. A. Watson says, remember, people have to pay to feed the birds. I think yes. the old guy of Xinjiang should have a sign that says pay before you take a picture. Well, yeah. he's definitely hired because yeah, he's hired. He's paid by the the tourism board or something to be there and do his thing because he appears in all of these propaganda videos. Yeah, every single one. Patricia Johnson, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rosie Riveter recently read Unrestricted Warfare, nineteen ninety nine PLA document. They were so angry at Soros for saying the RMB was worthless. Curious of the CCP spread conspiracies all the time. Absolutely. Are you kidding me? CCP spreads conspiracy. What do you think they're doing right? with what the Fort Detrick thing? COVID is. Yeah. They're literally spreading, literally, conspiracy theories. Yeah. Uh, Koala 12. Oh, there's apparently a drinking game where every time I say literally, people have to drink. So oh, okay. There's people must be wasted right now. Koala <laughs> 1203 so. says, congratulations on your milestone, guys. Keep it up. Here's some fi- free $5 eucalyptus money. Thank, Thank you, you. Much. Appreciate it. I saw the koalas. Um, That's another good currency is Australian money. It's also that plastic kind of... Yeah, it looks cool. And so is the euro. Oh, okay. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I don't think I've seen euros. Because you haven't been to Europe. I have, you moron. I've been to Europe a ton of times. But that's the UK. That's not Europe. It's Well, it used to be it before Brexit. It doesn't use Brexit. the euro. Yeah, it but never I mean, used the euro. Yeah, but when I went was like 95, yeah, 97. When did, the, when did the European Union start? A long time ago. Yeah, I, I, I've seen Deutschmarks and stuff. Yeah, my point is you've never, you didn't own euros. You didn't go to Europe where they use euros. Yeah, but you know, the UK is in Europe. That's contested. It's freaking Europe, okay? You're saying British aren't European? The European, the UK never used euros is what I'm saying. Yeah, they didn't use euros, but it's in Europe. Well, we're talking about European currency. Yeah, but (laughs) that doesn't matter. That's. It's like saying South Africa is not in Africa. Then it uses a different country, uh, currency from Zambia. (laughs) <laughs> don't make me get a straw pull up what the, no. no i think i know it's it, i i would consider uk and europe but they don't use euro so no they don't use euros no. yeah i've seen euro coins yeah I've they also have plastic money yeah, yeah yeah that's true i'd like to see those They're pretty cool jay park says are you planning to watch the chinese doctors and make a review and make great content i don't know every time people recommend we watch shows we never do and it's not because we don't appreciate your thing it's because when people hype stuff up so much they don't what, what I is lose the interest. chinese doctors? i don't know it's gonna be some show I watched something called the when my parents in law were over. They were watching that thing called the Factory about like a. Oh, that was a big thing, wasn't it? I, I was I was drinking. I was actually getting a bit annoyed, to be honest. <laughs> Why? Because they were showing like the the factory here in the U.S. and they had like Mao Zedong's picture on the wall and oh, okay. you know the usual thing and yeah. it was just very much like a Chinese factory. And I was just getting annoyed, thinking like this this kind of is annoying. Right uh david ward thank you very much very generous thank you that's incredible he says generous. never stop uh speaking the truth you guys are making a big difference in the and world. Thank, thank you, you very david. much for your support you're helping us make a difference in yes. a huge way seriously uh patrick t says what do you think xi jinping's end goal is with these crackdowns and closing down china how are the chinese people taking it the only goal is to preserve the power of the ccp yes, make and sure consolidate his power more yeah. and more he just wants to be Ultimate powerful power. and have complete control over what china Chinese people do and say. And if his global ambitions and global takeover ambitions fail, then at least he's got full on control of daily life in China. Yeah. Uh, A. Watson says, son of a, son of a thing. <laughs> there it is. Uh, it says, sorry, can't let it go. What? What? Who shot? I don't know what these names are. Osley Bubbit Bird. Now the question is who, <laughs> who that old man in Xinjiang? I just don't know the reference. Right. Okay. Yeah, well, we're going to have to figure it out. Frederick York, uh, what did the what did they make of the what did they make of the U.S. intelligence reports and the origin of Corona? Will she instruct his chi- his scientists to cooperate? Never. No way. I mean, that's the problem is we need more hard data from China, and they're shutting down completely. And you know why we don't have more hard data from China? Do you know why? Why? <laughs> that's why. Yes. Encore. Okay. Encore. 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 Okay, let's do it again. 
It's Peter Balsack and people like him who stopped the world from getting hard data and covered for China while everything was... He deleted. literally said it's extremely unlikely. Balsack. From a lab in China. Yeah, he said it was extremely unlikely. He was the only uh, uh, person from America to go on that WHO fact-finding mission, yeah. which they didn't actually go to fact, China, find facts. China, get this here. China approved him. Only, the only him. One. And what did they do? They didn't go look in the labs and try to figure things out. They went and sat down and watched presentations that the Chinese Communist Party had organized for them. PowerPoint presentations. Right. You know, luckily... Peter Balsack. Yeah, good old, you know... Balsack. We can never forget that it's people like him that betrayed the world on China's behalf. Right. Anyway. Correct. Peter Balsack, am I right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I can't get enough. <laughs> yeah, of that. can't get enough. Such of that. a good edit. Yeah. Anyway, um, so Saptarshi Singupta says Hanuman from the Hindu yes, epic. Yes, Hanuman uh, is that awesome like monkey god that eats mountains and stuff. Rama, yeah, yeah. Ramayana, Ramayana yeah. is the inspiration for Sun Wukong. Mm. Uh, by the way, I'm a weeb too. The Japanese manga Kingdom got me interested in China and consequently your channels. That's Thank very you very interesting. That's cool. You know, because I read the 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 Mahabharata and the Ramayana when I was young. That's and, cool. Uh, yeah. I actually really used to enjoy Hanuman was my favorite character. Yeah, you're really into Indian Indian yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, that was cool. I liked him. He's like jumps certain leagues over like oceans and stuff and can destroy mountains. He's a very cool. cool guy. Yeah. Wish I wish I bumped into him. Yeah, no, he's a cool dude. Yeah. Cool dude. He's a cool dude to read about him. Rama's yeah. just messing around with Sita all the time and whatever. Anyway, cool. let's continue. Oh, on. That's cool. Lou M, Chairman Meow kills sparrows. Mm. Yeah, good good one. He does. Simon <laughs> Young. I actually that boomer, was meow like a cat <laughs> boomer me i had a cat named chairman meow uh simon young of course you did here you know that you yeah used to, you used to hang out with chairman meow but you know you know what you're not the only person i know in china a foreigner who had of a cat course, called chairman course. meow actually almost of every foreigner that had a cat in china had a cat called chairman let me meow. just let me just put you're on like my, the fifth one <laughs> let me put on my bead bracelet <laughs> and my <laughs> thai fisher pants while i'm at Dude. it yeah you need oh, one of those shit. bead bracelets and walk around Seriously, that Chairman Meow thing? Let me guess. I'm going to wear a t shirt that says La Wai Lila and then the back says La Wai Zola. Oh, wait, yeah. I had that. Yeah, you did have that, didn't you? Seriously, that Chairman Meow thing, I'm thinking back. All the foreigners thought it was so clever to do it. If you that. didn't name your cat Chairman yeah. Meow, it's weird. But I mean, they thought they were so clever doing it. But <laughs> imagine like how insulting that must be to local people to like name sure. your cat after their god. Weirdly enough, my, my Chinese friends thought it was funny. Right. But if you had a certain demographic, they of would people, probably lynch you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. you call your cat they'll, like the they'll, lost generation. They'll lynch yeah. you and eat the cat. Yes, correct. The yeah. lost generation. Yeah, they'd absolutely. kick your ass. Yeah, the young people were fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Simon Young says, "Curious, would an ethnically Chinese foreigner who marries a Chinese woman have a different experience from what you guys have experienced?" Uh, yes, uh, and oh, I, yeah. we actually we know, talked about that a lot. We actually know a few people like that, and they're very disappointed because they are expected to be Chinese, but they can't speak Chinese, and so then they get treated like an outsider. It's a big mess. It's actually a horrible situation to be yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. It's a very, you know... Um, but yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Jan Fauska. Hey, guys. Nice to catch you again. Enjoying the show as always. Thanks for speaking the truth. Do you guys watch car YouTubers? Uh, almost yes. exclusively. Yeah, I love cars. Do you know Doug DeMiro? No. <laughs> this is a show about China. Uh, I love to um, watch those, you know, when people try to... Uh, fixed broken cars in fields like Vice Group Garage mm -hmm. or Junkyard Digs or those kind of people. Yeah. I enjoy watching. I that watch kind of uh, thing. Everyday Driver, Car Throttle, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Hex Hex Net ha has an X. Thank you okay. very much. Guy Dude Bro says, uh, "Sorry if you covered this before, but can you talk about Assassin's Mace as it re relates to China's approach to U.S. relations?" I've heard. I've actually heard that. that. Well, I, I can't remember now. We'll have to, I did read about it, so we'll have to look into it. Interesting. I'll make a note. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Pope Benedict. Oh, thank you very much, Pope. I'm blessed. <laughs> I served for Britain in Afghanistan. My mates died there, and it angers me that the CCP supports them. My wife is Korean and lived there 10 years. I flew in Korean. That's fantastic. Um, interesting. It's very different than the story I heard about Pope Benedict. But <laughs> yeah. I, jokes aside, I, yeah. I'm sorry about that. No, it's awful. What, uh, thank you for your service. You know, how, how China is backing the Taliban right now is awful. Yes. We, we will yeah. talk about it in the future more. Don't you worry. Yeah. Because they keep digging themselves deeper and deeper in bed with the Taliban. Um, PB, anyway. PB says, you got to understand. You got to understand China. China Actually, is my home. We need to get that sound bite because this yeah. person found where we talked about it. Uh, oh, yeah. Sias. Oh, Did you find it? I, yeah, I, I, we'll have to make a sound bite out of it. Yeah, you found the actual clip. I did, yeah. Oh, good. Sias, uh, does China want to send Uyghurs to Afghanistan? Maybe. 
Foreign Influence says, check out Li Zhi and his song, The Square. Okay. okay. We will. Okay. Got it. Um, Hi says, I believe the Aussies invented that plastic money. Well, well maybe they did. Good for them. Return to Orc Monkey says, was going to make a meme for the ADV subreddit playing the playing on the term Xi Jinping thought like T A T O T. That would be good. That's decided, actually pretty funny. Decided to Google it to save myself some trouble. That's one image of poo I wish I could unsee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Xi yeah. Jinping thought. That's, I like that. That's a good one. I like that. Good that's, job, man. That's good, good job. Orc Monkey. Yeah. Uh, Mark, here's some pesos for you. Fantastic. Thank you. I, I, I don't think, uh, maybe a couple times we've gotten some pesos. Yeah. Uh, Sashrin, uh, China makes the most electronic devices, but why do they have so much trouble making their own chips instead of using chips from Taiwan in America? Well, you need R&D and you need creativity. You need, and you, you need some very specific um, machines. Very, it's very yeah. high tech. Don't forget, it was only very recent that China could actually make a ballpoint pen. Yeah. It was like about five years ago is yeah. when they finally could make a ballpoint pen because just the technology needed to make the, you know, the whatever the kind of steel. They didn't have that. Right. Look and China that. can't innovate. They can, they can manufacture. They, they copy, they manufacture. Having worked with actual, you know, te technology supply companies and stuff in China, remember that when they put together all these electronics, they still source their chips from other places. Correct. So they can put everything together, build ICs, do all this but when it comes to specific chips, they can't make them themselves. So they no. they have to go and find supply. You have chips. Lay's and Doritos and all that stuff doesn't come from China. Sure. Right? <laughs> they, uh, sorry, yeah. that's a horrible joke. He's like, seriously. <laughs> Ulrich yeah. Saukel says, do you think the CCB cuddling with Taliban's is going to backfire when they discover the Uyghur genocide? This is not a hidden secret, no. guys. No. And no, Ulrich, the Taliban knows about the Uyghur genocide. They don't care. They don't give a shit. No. It's just like, like Al Qaeda, mm. Al Qaeda can use the, uh, Islam as a as a excuse for whatever they're doing or like a, a what whatever's behind them, right? But yeah. actually, it's just a criminal organization. It is. It's just a terrorist organization. They're not religious, no. right? Um, so no, they don't, they're not going to care. But they might use it as an excuse later to rebel. Right. Uh, Amber Roel, I, I got five on it. Love you guys. Okay. Uh, Pope Benedict <laughs> says, "Honis," I, I can't read Honis that. Honis, wait. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I can Google it. Okay. Let's just see if it comes up. Anyway. Oh, it's a... Uh, Middle sh French maxim meaning shamed, be whoever ills of it. Okay, okay. that's Fair interesting. Enough. The British Chivalric Order of the Garter. Hmm. Thank you very much. <laughs> the Garter Belt. Okay. Uh, Mark Vogel, first time mm -hmm. donating. Ate Uyghur food Thank for you. the first time. It's so, so, good. so good. It's so good. The manti dumplings are the best I've ever eaten. Yeah, if you Steve guys haven't ever. seen it, we did this this um, documentary on our own. It's called Quest for the Best Chinese in the USA. Yeah, and the Uyghur episode's amazing. The Uyghur food that we had up in the Bay Area, it's freaking amazing. Oh, that was so actually good. the best on the whole trip. Yes. Yeah, hands, hands, down, hands down. Hands down. Hands down. Yeah. Uh, Frederick York says, keep up the great work. Any chance? So he didn't say that. Why did I read that? He didn't say that. What? He said, any chance you guys can get Josh Rogan on the podcast <laughs> to dissect the lab? Like I'm like giving him, putting words in yeah. his mouth. Um, yeah, maybe. Thank you. Uh, plus 9191. Can you address the attacks by some YouTubers, uh, towards you implying that you hate China? These videos try to discredit all the good work you're doing. Well, it's, fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> like, whatever. There's nothing to address. As no, no, like as we've said before, the CCP will do anything to shut down any criticism of the Chinese Communist Party and the government. So any any kind of policies they put in into action, anything that they do, if anyone criticizes them, they have to silence them. And that's what's happening. These guys are rewarded for attacking us in many ways, more ways than one, not just money, but also, you know, through support. They know that if they attack us... It's a quick and easy way to get a huge amount of support from Chinese nationalists, et cetera, et cetera. So we see it for what it is. It's just boring. It's cheap. They attack us because they want to curry favor with the CCP or to, you know, get something like that. And so it's just kind of hollow and useless. Yeah. So you don't need to pay attention to it because it's all nonsense anyway. We're an open book. Everything we've ever done on the Internet is out there in the open. We don't hide anything. So every time you see a Serpent's Day exposed video... 
I bet you... Or Lao 86. Lao 86 exposed. 100% if you go and watch that, there's nothing exposed. They just show clips that we've put out there ourselves and try to like take the, them out the of few, context. The few gotcha moments that some of these shills have tried, especially on me recently, are things from my YouTube channel that they've convinced themselves that are hidden. Yeah. They think it's some hidden thing that I deleted. It's all there, guys. Yeah. We have done nothing we regret they we just, stand by they honestly say. just take things out of uh, context and try to make it to make it look like Ooh, I at found the end this. of the day yeah. it doesn't actually change what we've said they never can no. challenge Absolutely our not. actual um videos and what no. we say they just try to attack our character to try and discredit our character so they and say it, oh he's bad so don't listen to what he says type and they, it's always conveniently ignored that a huge percentage of our following are ethnically chinese people absolutely that actually can't speak up because a lot of their yeah. families are back in china it's 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 very base cancel culture. Yeah, That's what they're, they're just trying to cancel us so that we stop, you know, revealing the truths of the CCP. Right. Uh, so I would ignore them if I were you, just like we ignore them. There's no yeah. point. Or watch them if you want. I don't give a yeah. shit. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, we, we like to not look too much into that because you don't want to be reactionary in your content. No. I'd rather just put out my message and what I believe in. Absolutely. Um, yeah, correct. Uh, Pep Pepic one twenty one says you can make a shirt. You should make a shirt that says "Chop the One text next to a destroyed building. I would buy that. I don't think we should glorify destroying buildings. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I've made Chop the One merch a long time ago. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I still have one of those t-shirts. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Chris says, "What do you? What you said about she controlling chi uh, China, no matter at what cost, reminds me of a quote from Julius Caesar. He said, "I'd rather be the first man here in a village than to be uh, the second man in Rome." Okay. Sounds about correct. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 Uh, Pope Benedict the sixteenth. Uh, he says something in Korean, which I cannot read. And I say, oh, probably in. <laughs> we can't yeah, read. We don't Korean. know what that is. Yeah. Love uh, Korean barbecue, by the way. Just, just seeing that's reminded me of that. I had Korean barbecue not that long ago. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? <laughs> just Nothing. reading some some tinfoil hats over here. I just love it. Mm -hmm. uh, Ross Wolf, serious question that sounds silly. Why does she always look so bored? He does. <laughs> he's so apathetic looking. Yeah. yeah. I wish he was more villainous looking because he's so like pudgy and like... He kind of looks like Jabba the Hutt. You know, Jabba <laughs> the Hutt, no joke, but if you look at Jabba the Hutt's expression, he doesn't look mean. No. He just looks like that. He's like vapid like, and oh, like... Thou art thou soul right. or whatever. And he's got that like look on his face. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. 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 Except Jabba is very smart. Okay. Very intelligent. The huts are a very intelligent race. Really? In every picture I see, it looks like he's thinking, like, I'm so tired of this shit. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> he does. He's always looking at the... Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. He's kind of it's to like, the side mm, of it, and he's like... Uh, everyone's just praising him, and he's yeah, like, whatever. Uh, they all have to drink that crap tea and that uh, cup with a lid on it, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and it's really kind of bland and not very good. Yeah, yeah. It's hot. <laughs> My cuter says, uh, hey guys, hectic day, but made it under the wire. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to replaying the first of two hours. Here's some Wuma vaccine. Hope all is going well. You're going to like you, the beginning of this one, Mike. And thanks one. for joining us. It's never the same without you. Yes, we <laughs> agree. I agree. Sorry. Tony <laughs> Sung, uh, damn, I'm late. Here's some small support. Maybe Thank I you. should just do Patreon. Going to watch from the start now. Thank you very much, Tony. Seriously, appreciate it. Sleepy Doodle loves... Oh, by the way, we do have a patron if you want to support the show. Uh, sure. Patreon.com slash ADV podcasts. I mean, you don't have to go there, by the way. I'm just no, throwing it out there. No, just, but we answer messages on that. Sure. Um, Sleepy Doodle, loved you. <laughs> such a cute name. <laughs> Sleepy Doodle says, loved you for years. Wanted to learn more about China. You taught me a lot. Used to want to go, but not anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah, that. unfortunately, that's but the same with us. Point. We used yeah. to want to live there, but not anymore. <laughs> yeah. mm. uh, Don, with another Korean message. Lots of Korean messages today. Unfortunately, we cannot read these. Yeah. Um, you know that the Koreans used to use Chinese Hanza characters, you know, yeah. Chinese characters. Oh, I can right click and say translate to. Yeah, and then uh, some. Oh, it doesn't work. Some uh, one of the emperors was like, "Screw this, we need our own," and then they invented that. Oh, it just translated. Oh. It says he said, "I hate communism. Please keep broadcasting." Yeah, we agree. Thank yeah. you. I can go back. Yeah, up let's to go that. back to 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 the other Pope Benedict. Eh? He's somebody. Pope there. Benedict says, "Korea." Uh, Korea, hooray for Korea. Okay, it's kind of like Jaya Jungle, but for yeah. Jaya Hangul. Hangul, yeah. yeah. Uh, Black Yellow Six, so the last one says, Holy crap, y'all still going? Awesome. I'll have to catch up. And thank cool. you very much, guys. We had a good one today. It was Fantastic. Fun. Thank you. This I really enjoyed this episode. I think. Yeah, it was a fun one. Yeah, I think we uh, covered quite a bit. Guys, again, this is such an important conversation we have every week. 
thank you so much for joining us. If you've just come in now, unfortunately, it's right at the end. But uh, you can go catch you up. Can, go watch the beginning. You can go watch it. It's, it's, it's a good one. Can't wait to see you next time. And enjoy your weekend. Go have a couple of beers if that's how you are inclined. Or a couple of teas if you're a teetotaler. Or a, a nice big hamburger. Or if you're a vegetarian, go eat a salad or whatever you do. Yeah. Can't do wait. all those things. Did, can't wait to see you in the next one. Um, Check out my video if you haven't already. Seamilk's got a video coming very soon. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a, a very important one, as always. And uh, we can't wait to see you next time. I will thank not... Thank you, Typhon. And thank you, William Paccio. Okay, I will not cut myself off this it's time. Okay. I want to say stay awesome, okay? And I'm not going to cut myself off.